mute us. We are live. Yes, we're live. My God, we're worldwide. Everybody in the entire world is watching us right now. All TV cameras everywhere. The the media. Look, they're CNN. I see CBS this news. Oh my gosh, Fox News is following us right now. Fox oh, news. you Fox News followers there on Facebook. <laughs> Oh my That's gosh, don't run me over with comments. Oh, I'm being flooded with comments right now. Oh my Bet. god, I can't I can't look. I can't look. So many. So many. So many. Oh my god, they've been they've you know, I announced this two hours ago and it has just been like a flood of people just lining up. It's you know what? I didn't even have to announce it. I just I just thought it. All right, everybody out there. Ah, Stuart's here. Hello, Stuart. He says, hey, I'm Stuart. here. I love you, Stuart. You're awesome. He was the first to show. That's great. Okay, so here we go. What we're going to do today. Now, Janice and I did a video on uh, Kelly. What was her last name? Eck Eckhart. Eckhart. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a week ago or so. And we went for five hours evaluating this one hour reading. So we didn't realize that until we're all done. So we're, we, we don't expect to go five hours today. Maybe, I don't know. We're prepared. Janice and I have got our, our arsenal here. I have my milk duds. I have my diet Dr. Pepper. She has her I've FC. I've got my FC is not tea. science mug filled with tea. We're set. So this is an hour, 45 minutes of reading, 15 minutes of intro. And this is a summit that Thomas John, the grief vampire, hot reading grief vampire, has arranged and it was in September 18th, 2021. And I have got a hold of this video and it's four hours long. I'm not showing you four hours today, but what I've been doing is breaking it up into little pieces as we go and evaluating it. And the last one, the last medium is Thomas John. And I uploaded a video of that last night. Uh, of just one of his readings and it's priceless you guys you've got to see that it is I thought of Janice when I saw it I said oh my gosh Janice is going to freak out when she sees this video because well I can't tell you why you'll have to watch but it's just 20 minutes long so it's nothing compared to what we're going to do right now so my very good friend Janice Boyton uh, from the FC world is here and one of the things we, we've been talking about as we've been going along through the video that we did previously is how related FC is to this world of the medium. Can you say something about that really quick, Janice? Well, um, I think a lot of it has to do with it. That, I mean, I'm sort of new to the psychic world as of, you know, a few years ago, but it seems like it's a both are kind of coping strategies um for people who are in really tough situations so with psychic people it's people who have lost a loved one with facilitated communication people it's somebody who's got profound profound communication difficulties often um autistic people with severe behavioral problems as well and um yeah so the overlap seems to be um more towards an emotional kind of response to it as a technique rather than anything that's um a lot of people watching probably would already know this that it's not evidence-based it's it's um it's based on anecdotes and feel-good stories and guesses and that kind of thing so um that's kind of where I see the overlap Kitty Biddle's here by the way so hey Kenny the world is complete we have Stuart Vice and we have Kitty Biddle here so those people who are watching this later on YouTube, these are um, a couple friends of ours. You might want to check their check them out. Amazing people, great thinkers, thinkers. Kenny's gonna love a little bit of a little in a little bit. We're gonna be talking about the orbs. Oh we'll yes, love that part. I like, thought of, I actually caught thought of Kenny when we I got to too. that part. As soon yeah. as she mentioned that, I was like, orbs, orbs. <laughs> and he's gonna like that part. Okay, so. The way I think about it with FC is that, and I want to caution everybody out there who's watching this. We think it's a laugh at a lot of times because you guys are going to look at this and go, oh my God. And it's really, it's hard to resist laughing at these people, the, the mediums and the, the sitters. But I really want you to try to remember 
that the people who are sitting for this, who have spent four hours watching these readings, they gave up their Saturday to watch these readings with these, I think there's five mediums, including Thomas John. And, and you'll see money. the same ones. Yeah, you'll see the same people appear all day long, sitting in the same places all day long whenever they come on screen. But these are vulnerable people. Oh, Brian. Hi, Brian. He, but he says he's only here in his astral form, Brian Hart. So <laughs> um, these are people who are in vulnerable situations. They, This is during the pandemic, it's during the lockdown. A lot of these people are lonely, isolated. Um, they've lost loved ones in ways that maybe were sudden because of COVID or or whatever, but they're, they're vulnerable. Um, and so possibly some of these people would never have reached out to mediumship and, and been into mediumship prior to the situation they're in now. Some of them have, are missing many people or just one or two, but like their spouse, somebody very close or, you know, like a child, which is, I can't even imagine how horrible that would be. But so keep that in mind that these people are in vulnerable situations and possibly may never have gotten into mediumship. They might have been critical thinkers before. The other thing I want to mention is um, that I forgot to mention <laughs> that um, oh, a lot of these women so far. I, I is there any men going to come up on this, Janice? Not I, in this one. No. no men. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't yeah. shock me at all. There's just three, pe three people and they're all, all women. Readings. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So. Well, she went long in her. Yeah. She went long in her, her um, description or discussion. I got through the second, I got through halfway through the second reading. I was out watering my yard when I was watching this, you guys. <laughs> How to get something done today. Um, but in many cases, these women were raised with mediumship being a thing that it is real um, from birth, you know, this is like maybe in their family or um, it's never dawned on them to question it. Or if they had questioned it in the past, that it, they were just like, oh no, of course mediumship is real. And then to a person who's in religion that believes in life after death, it's common to, I mean, if you believe in life after death, if, if you're raised that way, and there's no questioning that, that is just your family's belief and your cultural belief then the idea that somebody out there could communicate with them is likely, right? I mean, why would you challenge that? It's just not everybody can believe it, but somebody can, right, Janice? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I, like, sometimes I laugh at the, like, the logic, like, when you follow some of the, the psychic's logic, that to me sometimes is, um, can That's be funny. A lower because... case L. That's a little L. <laughs> yes. Well, you, yeah. I mean, you know, like, like, um, uh, yeah. I, I just think that, but it's not the people that I'm laughing at. The, the, it's this is a, like you said. These are these are real people, and they've got real stories, and they're reaching out to the psychic mediums because they feel like they can provide them with some sort of comfort or connection with their loved one. And that is serious business mm -hmm. um, to me anyway. I mean, and, and we've seen, um, I don't think it comes up so much in this particular reading, but in the last one we did, you know, it has some serious consequences uh, about um, the advice that the psychics give. And um, we were talking earlier about like what the certification is for these people. And they, they may go way beyond like the advice that they're giving may go way, go way beyond their area of expertise. You know, like uh, somebody was one of the psychics was giving, not in this one, but was giving advice about um, what you should do in a police kind of situation. And it's sort of like, they don't, you know, like a police investigation of a murder. And it's sort of like, they don't have any business yeah, saying no anything business. about that at all, you know? And, and so that's, that's where it gets really uncomfortable for me when people go beyond um, just saying, oh, your loved one, I'm, I'm getting a sense that your loved one is here and they love you and you did the best you could, you know, that's okay. You know, I can, I can kind of see the rationale for that, but when it goes beyond that, mm, yeah, yeah. It makes let's, it really uncomfortable. Involved in the murder investigation of your daughter that I have no idea who, what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> so uh, we're going to go, okay. we're going to go into the video. So because there's only three readings, the first segment of this is going to be Tracy, who is Thomas John's assistant. And Tracy is just going to introduce um, our sitter today, our, our, our medium today. And they're always fascinating to me, these mediums, um, who they are. And the person we're going to be talking about today and showing on video is Lauren Starr, S-T-A-R-R, -R, right? Um, no, it's Start, S-T-A-R-T-T. -T. Oh, yeah, S-T-A-R-T-T. -T, and it's Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N. Yeah. And I'd never heard of her before, but uh, we're going to let Tracy, who's never seen a medium that she didn't fall head over heels in love with, I think. Right. Uh, First, she was in the top five and then she was in or top. three, three or five. Three. Yeah. Oh, this woman yeah. is the top three. Whatever that means. Oh, my gosh. OK, so we're going to I'm going to let um, I'm going to let Tracy introduce her. And that's just a couple, a minute or so. And then we're going to stop and we're going to talk about what we found out about this woman, Lauren. And then we're going to let Lauren talk about her, what it means to have signs from, is that what it is? She's, how do you know you're getting signs or? Yeah, well, the evidence that they're here. Oh, evidence that they're here. Oh, I love yeah. that there's going to be evidence. This is great. I know. So I underlined it. <laughs> I'm going to underline it three times. I'm not competitive at all. <laughs> okay. I may interrupt halfway through because it's 15 minutes, I think. She goes on for a long time. Yeah. And it is. And, and when you're watching these and you're trying to evaluate it, yeah, we could take notes and all that. But I think it's better to respond a little bit informed because it gives a little relief too from the people watching on Facebook or on YouTube to be able to make comments or, or if you're on Facebook and you're watching and you give me a, and you leave me a comment, I'll, I'll talk about it if it's, yeah. if yeah. it's good or, or if it's funny. But um, one of the things that I do also want to mention is we're not going to say anything about anybody being a con artist or a fraud or any of that. Not, not that I'm really worried about ever being sued, but those aren't legitimate terms we should be able to use, but we can call them grief vampires or we can say it's bullshit or we can say those kinds of things but you really have to be careful and not say anything that would be um litigious i guess yeah yeah and well i think these people no i mean not to defend uh, i'm not really defending them but i think they're it this comes from probably a good place in most of the in this person i think that we're seeing not everybody but um this person i think really legitimately wants to help people and believes that they are so i mean but but that good intentions doesn't mean doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that you're not doing harm or that that you're not providing people with real evidence so um, yeah, I think we can I talk agree. about behaviors and her, the language she uses and her approach. She may um, be fooling herself. Yeah. Well, I think so part we'll of it about is that when we get all done, because I'm really curious with the, with the people who are listening in either on Facebook live right now or on YouTube are going to think about this because I have a lot of sympathy towards a lot of these mediums. Most, there's a large chunk of them that are women who are probably trying to not only want to help. They didn't, you know, they didn't get into a field that was help wise, but there's also, I see a lot of them that are moms that are stay at home moms, and they may see this as a way of making some money that they can do from home. And it's, it's, it's like much like spiritualism was in the 1800s and so on with the Fox sisters, where the, they were women who weren't listened to. And finally, you know, and here are these, well, they were girls at first, but how a lot of them kind of became mediums because now they were powerful. They were business entrepreneurs in their field. Women mm -hmm. couldn't have had a, a career. Mm -hmm. So I'm not making too many excuses for them because this is modern. I mean, this is 2021, the video we're watching, but, um, right. you know, I, I think that there may be some aspect to that. These women may be in a, in an environment where they're not able to, um, um, they're in a, an environment where they're not able to um, work outside of the home. This medium specifically is a mom of three young boys. I'm sure she's busy. Uh, Brian Hart just raised a point and, and he's absolutely right. Penn and Teller on their very popular show uh, that was on Showtime for a very long time was called Bullshit. And they used the term bullshit 
because they wouldn't be able to be sued for it. It was, it was not, there's no legality towards being able to sue somebody for the, for the phrase bullshit. But if you'd call them a liar or a conman or something like that, then, then you can't really, uh, you can sue over that. And besides it's getting into the mindset of the, of the medium that we don't have any, I'm not psychic. Are you psychic Janice? Not that I know of. Oh, not that I know of. I'm, I'm 60. So maybe it's going to hit me any moment now, but at the moment, maybe I'm I, there. yeah, maybe I have latent powers. I think, I don't know. <laughs> well, I could read your mind. I can read other people's minds when they leave me comments <laughs> or on YouTube yeah. guys. So we really would appreciate it because you're seeing this on YouTube. If you are seeing this on YouTube, it's not there at this moment, but we'll be, um, I would appreciate it. If you find this interesting, please leave us lots of comments, like, share oh my gosh i'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers you guys i'm so close and then of course once i'm at a thousand subscribers i'm gonna say i, I need to get two thousand subscribers so um this is a long so my youtube channel psychics explained is a longer format in some cases some of them i uploaded a video yesterday it was 20 seconds but um our i'm trying to get into the weeds of explaining this because i do personally i really do believe that um, in the scientific skepticism community, we tend to be very, uh, <laughs> we tend to get very um, flippant about it. Like, oh, these are all a bunch of bunches. It's, they're idiots, they're stupid, they don't know. Or all mediumship is this. And they say, oh, it's people randomly just saying names or it's randomly yeah. calling letters out of the alphabet. And that's not true. It is much more nuanced to it. It is so much more interesting than, than I think. And and going back to the FC world compared to the psychic world, these are people who are in situations, like you said, that are trying to deal with something that's really difficult. In the FC world, these are people who, who have believed when they had their child that that child would grow up and become independent and go to college, get married, have children. You know, you have those feelings your child is going to thrive. And then when they have a child, that is severely um, communication disabled. I mean, I hate to say they're not communicating. They can't communicate because they definitely are communicating. It's just right. not the way we like are communicating right now. They are telling you, leave me alone, well, knock it off. I'm tired. Right. Give, give me a break. Stop holding my hand. You know, they're definitely communicating. But those people, it's like they're, they're, their expectations of their parents have been taken from them. Like I expected my child to be this person. And it's a reflection on me that my child, you know, is not going to have that life. So they lean into these, um, this belief, and there's a small percentage of people who believe in facilitated communication or spelling to communicate. But um, in the mediumship world, I also kind of think that's true because a lot of the parent people who are here, their their parents and their child has died young, and they had expectations that their child would grow up and would have a college education and get married. It's kind of the same thing, and they're they're maybe projecting that they want to think that they're still continuing in the other world. If that idea, and I kind of have, I think a little bit of that is going on, and you guys are going to see some true bullshit today. Oh my God. Oh my God. I cannot even, <laughs> even believe it. And, and I'm serious to the way these women in the readings suspend their judgment and believe it is incredible. No, the sitters in this one work really hard to make this work. Oh my gosh. Just the thing she says and then, oh man. And they're like, yeah, absolutely. And I'm going, I would have just walked out of this reading. <laughs> I just, it's, from what I saw, it was awful, but I'm interested in what the comments other people have. I'm really interested in your insight. So let me show you this video. I had to blur it again. So we had to stall a little bit. I'm sorry, it was a second or two later getting over here because somebody popped in, this woman who comes in, she's been here all day sitting in her car, getting multiple readings and her, she pops in at one point on this woman's uh, intro. And I didn't expect that. And I blurred the rest of it, but I didn't want to show this person. I'm like, oh, what? What is she doing in here? She keeps yeah. hitting buttons on her phone and it's <laughs> and it's taking off her 
your screen and there's she's like oh. <laughs> yeah she, she keeps going oh so, no. so she's done that several times in the in, in the day i don't know if she's un, i don't know what she thinks she's doing she's watching obviously on her phone and um in her car and so she seems to think that i don't know so i'm going to turn to uh one of the things i noticed with the last video we did is that the readings weren't quite as loud as um your and mine speaking voices mm -hmm. so i want to make sure that it's hearable so i need to screen share and i hope people in facebook let me turn this on one of my other screens so i can see this better i hope people on facebook will tell me if that's if you can hear her about the same level as we are if not i will just have a good pray <laughs> So I'm going to let this go just for a minute or two, two as Tracy's trying to introduce her. And then Janice and I are going to come back and we're going to talk about who this medium is versus the relation, what we found out in the, um, in the, I'm going to hit optimize for a video clip. Maybe that will make all the difference this time. Oh, I froze her on a spot that is not attractive. Okay. So here we go. I see. Hey, Lauren, how are you? I'm doing well. So nice to see you. So good to, to hear you. Oh, good to see you too. Let me do my little um, intro for you. Okay. If you don't mind just giving me a moment. I was have all these tabs open here. Oh, there we go. Lauren Stard is a certified medium who has had the ability to connect to spirit from a young age. It wasn't until being awakened by her best friend, Soul, prior to learning of her passing that her life changed forever. Since then, Lauren has become passionate about connecting others with their loved ones in the spirit world and helping them recognize their own personal connection to do the same. And um, not all the mediums we have on all the summits um, I can recommend or say I've had a reading with, but I will truly tell you that Lauren is in the top five readings I've ever had. She is outstanding, very evidential. Um, you know, like I said, don't do everybody, but I've had a lot of really good readings and I would say she's in the top three or top five. So I highly recommend her. Thanks, Tracy. Honestly, it is such an honor to even know you. And thank you for having me. Uh, so today I really wanted to or to speak about anything. I okay, so we're gonna stop right there so that we can talk about her intro. I think it's a good place to do it because she's gonna talk for 15 minutes. And I got I got like two bites out of my salad. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost done you guys all right janice you want to start i've got some too so let's see okay let's well I'm, I'm, talk better. I'm like really curious about what makes a certified medium so i went to her website and she's a self-taught medium she didn't she didn't um wow she I'm didn't shocked. yeah well um she didn't like some of the other ones kind of list a, a directory that they're with or you know whatever she did list that she's um was certified by mark somebody named mark ireland, ireland. Mark ireland. so ireland. i don't know if anybody knows these people i don't this is all new to me so um <laughs> from what i could tell he was an author which is fine um he's a son of a psychic richard ireland who's supposedly a famous person i guess and um, when I looked at Mark Ireland, because there wasn't anything on his website that said that he certifies mediums, I and mean, that wasn't he he writes about this topic. But apparently, um, Mark has been part of a um, foundation for mind being research which I thought was kind of interesting. I'd actually like to go back and look at more of that, but apparently he's been part of research at um, University of Arizona under Gary Schwartz, which oh I, I, I gather people talk about him. kind of know about him. 
And um, and also the University of Virginia, which I thought was really interesting because the University of Virginia has an FC program there. So I, I was curious if they kind of knew each other. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. I, I didn't have time to look. But anyway, Kitty so says, uh, she certified her right. I, meaning I printed out my own certificate I got at the dollar store. <laughs> Right, 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 right. Well, la last week I found one um, to to be an evidential, a master evidential medium for sixteen ninety nine. It was a three hour course, so you know. <laughs> so anyway, I, she didn't she didn't really have. Oh, and she was also part of Helping Hands Healing. Parents, uh, you were going to talk about that. Helping parents um, heal organization. Yeah. So um, I couldn't find anything that would make me want to go to this person um in terms of like who's an expert you know expert yeah um i couldn't find anything except that she was self-taught well now i'm a, i'm more or less a self-taught artist but i can give you some classes that i've taken from you know that might give me a, a few you know creds from people maybe not but anyway um anyway i'm not i'm not um I'm not reading anybody's minds or giving them advice through my artwork. So I would, I, I would think that that would maybe, maybe, I should, yeah. Um, <laughs> I learned my lesson through FC. <laughs> I'm not doing that. But anyway, um, so that, to, so to me that her website, even her website, anybody can have a website. Anybody can say they're certified. You know, what is it, what did it, what is it that makes these people have the education behind them to to be a uh, an expert medium and i really didn't find anything on the website that told me that okay so here let me let me show you what i found um and um here's her youtube channel with 50 subs 56 subscribers and one video so She's just amazing talking to dead people. And she is in the certified mediums. This is the certified mediums by Mark Ireland. And anybody endorsed by Gary Schwartz is, well, now Gary Schwartz has a PhD in psychology at the University of Arizona. And he's been long been the bane of the skeptic community because he has his PhD. And his PhD gives him creds, right? It's the argument from authority. He's right. the man who gave us um, John Edward. So, oh. <laughs> okay. And he had yeah. this whole system called, he had this whole thing called the afterlife experiments. And it was so blatantly, uh, the controls on it were awful. So mm -hmm. like the mediums were staying at his house. And so <laughs> the sitters, I think they use the same sitters throughout the whole time that they were going through investigations and testing these people. So uh, you know, the, okay. the, the medium would say, I'm getting this. And it's like, so they could, so they could talk to the other mediums who would tell them, Hey, I found out that she has a dead sister named Marianne, you know, or whatever. And then they just kept beating off each other. And I believe they even used like the, the mediums are testing. I think they even pulled in Gary Schwartz himself, who was definitely a believer. And they pulled him in saying, Hey, you're a, um, you know, I'm getting something for you now. And then I think like the person who's running the camera, they got that person. Okay. It was, it was it's, it's so bad, but mediums tend to the, the world of pseudoscience, this world, they tend to mention Gary Schwartz a lot because he's a PhD. Right. Yeah. Right. And then here, this person right here is certified by Mark Ireland, which is Kate Cofet. And mm. I've done two videos on her right now. This is the woman who attended Thomas John's events um, totally closely associated with them. And he is giving her readings that are based on her Facebook page or that he knows her. She was the woman in green that was in our, my very first investigation of Thomas Don, the um, operation pizza roll. And Kate was the one who was fake crying as Thomas John was giving her a reading. And then when we went into the VIP room afterwards, she hands Thomas John a book and because he has, you know, they gave us books because we paid for a VIP and uh, she hands it to him and she says, make sure you spell it right this time when you autograph. it." <laughs> and then he turns around and says that he's one, she's one of his students. 
So this is this group, the Mark Ireland thing, which is, if you're, you know, come on, if you're endorsing some of these people, this is giving me a nice list of people to look up in the future. There's a whole bunch of them. And <laughs> this is parents helping parents heal. Now, I've had a bunch of run-ins with helping parents heal. Their, their leader of the group is named uh, Brian Smith. I believe they have them all over the place, but this one is, um, the one I've been dealing with is an online group. It's a, it's a, it's a place where people can come when you've had your child die and you're going to be embraced by all these other wonderful people who are also in very vulnerable situations who are online and they're sharing each other their story. They're, they're being very, um, Oh, I should probably stop share while I'm talking to you guys. So she's, she's um, the helping parent parents heal organization is, is like a, the leader, Brian Smith, I believe is a, well, he's definitely lost his child and he believes that mediumship is real and that his daughter's coming through all the time, you know, and it's a horrible situation that he's dealing with and his wife is in there with him, you know, believes this too. But um, he's, he's a, an empathetic, nice, kind person, but he firmly believes this. And what they do is they allow these, these evidential mediums into their group. So they're like sharks floating around because all these grieving people are sharing their stories and they're getting readings by these people for, I don't even know if they're paying, you know, it doesn't matter to me because they're being taken advantage of because if right. you're not paying, then you're getting testimonials out of them and that's right. clients. So uh, this helping parents heal organization is just rife with, with uh, mediumship. It's just incestuous 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 yeah yeah uh, when we were talking about it last week um it felt kind of like amway too like they were recruiting people from the conference to either become mediums yeah. or to go into that group or whatever so that it, it felt a little bit um like there was a purpose to to picking particular people to right. to uh, I agree. So this helping parent parents heal organization, um, I I think somebody should look into it. And I've just been on the edge looking into it. And they've even tested Thomas John. The Brian Smith did a video, and it was supposed to be this double blind scientific. <laughs> Liz, it wasn't. What was it? You had that phrase last week that they used double study double testing as double opposed testing. to double testing <laughs> as opposed to tests? double blind testing so the double testing for kelly eckhart was that she whoever she was giving her the certification um read her or she read for that person once and then they picked a volunteer that she read for and that was the double testing double and test what yeah right the double testing and what and and they're probably using that term on purpose. But what we're talking about double blind testing is that the medium wouldn't know anything about, well, if it was double blind, the medium and the sitter wouldn't know anything about each other at all. They probably wouldn't even be able to see each other or hear right. each other. I mean, because you get clues from what a person's on. Your That's true. Yep. And the That's voice true. and you can see him and you, anyway. So uh, Brian Smith had done a, he thought was a, scientifically blinded test and this is early on in my career with thomas john so probably about 2019 or so gosh it's only 2023 but it seems like that was years and years and years ago decades ago it does <laughs> it is the pandemic messed it up i think we're missing time somebody owes me some years i think we all need some years uh but so brian smith did this test and we showed how flawed it was i mean i and my team, within minutes, had figured out who the sitter was. It was so simple. Yeah. And so, um, anyway, so they, so Thomas John says that he's been tested by Gary Schwartz also. And yeah. uh, by the, you know, this double-blinded thing. He, he used to put that video up all the time. I've been tested. I've been tested. And you're like, oh, really? Here's the, here's the answer to your test, you know. But anyway, helping parents heal. There's a whole bunch of mediums on here I've never heard of. I'm going to have to go through this. I'm going to probably have to um, use this like as a template of people to look into. So, you know, if you're wary of that and you're one of these mediums, you might get the heck off of this <laughs> before I get a chance to go to them. 
<laughs> you'll notice Thomas John is not on here because I've been told by many people that that they got so many complaints about him in the in the helping parents heal group because he was hot reading them and it became obvious and then he was also booking appointments that and taking their money and then not showing up so I looked through this and he's not on there I should probably go back into the Wayback Machine and see if this page is archived and see if Thomas John was on here years past because I've been told he was on and now he's not. Hmm. So Interesting. we'll have to check that out. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay, I'm back to where I can see the Facebook page and I see Kenny Bill says, double testing means I do science. Okay, what else do you find out about this one? Not a lot. I mean, that's, that's about it. I mean, I, I didn't really... Um the the links on our website just went to instead of to other people's websites it's just linked it's like circular into in her website so it, i didn't really there were testimonials and anecdotes on there um which are not evidence yeah testimonials um, people whose first name is only on there. <laughs> right right and they were saying you know how wonderful she was and stuff and and that to me that doesn't mean a whole lot um nice. to me I'm sure she's yeah. a very nice person and she's a great mother of her three boys yep. raising to yep. to this crap. Yep. <laughs> I wonder if her kids are gonna grow up and go, oh mom. Well, she <laughs> she grew up, she grew up with it. So it's likely that her her children are exposed to it as well. So it, it just seems like it's something that's natural to her family. So here's so I did listen to the video that she put up, the one video on her YouTube channel. I listened to it, and here's she says. Uh, it's called How I Discovered I Was a Medium. And she says she's been doing it since childhood. Her goal for 2020 was to share more. And now that we're in 2023 and there's still no videos on her YouTube channel, I think she's failed. But she does have a Facebook page and it has 3,600 um, followers. So, and she has been posting. So, so her most recent post, I think it was June 10th or something like that. So she's posting there. And she probably has Instagram and Twitter. I haven't looked, but all right. So she says, here's what she says, that she's seen spirits since she was a child. Half of her family is atheists and half of them are uber Christian. And the Christian part of her, her family would not have believed in mediumship. They would have been averse to it, which is like a side of some Christians just think this is like devil. But right. it's okay if a priest, uh, it's okay if a pastor has a profit in now profits are okay they're just doing the same thing but they they're not called mediums she thought she was schizophrenic she self-diagnosed herself as schizophrenic because she was seeing people i don't know mm. maybe she is who knows and then she dove into the psychology so she got into the science world and which is sad then she started taking care of a very sick friend this is a story she tells all the time on her different areas uh, about page so she was uh, best friends with this woman who was very, very ill, and she was taking care of her. And then one night she woke up, and her friend was sitting there looking at her. Like, you know, huh. I don't know if it was ghostly or if she's in clothes or I don't know what, but she was like, whoa, what the heck? Sounds like sleep paralysis to me. But... Yeah, it does, because you can see people, and if it's somebody you're very close to, especially somebody who's helped very bad, you've been thinking about them, and you're saying gosh, I hope she makes it through the night or I hope, I hope her caregiver, you know, the person who took over for me today, who's now like, you know, I was there during the day. Now the other person's there, I hope they don't fall asleep or, and they're there to make sure her breathing is whatever, you know, I guess that might be weighing on your mind if you're caring for somebody who's ill. Yes. So having them appear is not that odd if we take her story as being legit. So then she says, uh, 15 minutes later, the phone rang and she was told her friend is dead. I always like that 15 minutes, like she was looking at her watch or something. <laughs> but everything seems to happen 15 minutes after. And then the phone rang 15 minutes later. Hmm. Never 11 minutes, never 17. <laughs> so um then she finally decided that um, she's, she, it realized, she realized she's a medium. And so she found the mediumship community, which I'm sure embraced her totally. And um, she's got a good personality. You know, she projects herself well. So I'm sure that they, they love that. I mean, even her bookshelf is arranged by 
color. So you'll see. Oh, is it? I didn't know this. <laughs> you'll see it in a minute again. Now you can't unsee that. So, um, oh my gosh. Um, so how about, my, my question is like, um, could her, could she have pieced that together? Like she maybe th thought about her friend, if, especially if she knew her friend was sick. I would think that your, your friend, I, I know when my, my partner's dad died, um, you know, whether we were here or at his house and just upstairs, we would think of him quite frequently. And, and then the phone rings and says, you know, your, your, your friend passed away. Like, how do you piece that together in your memory in terms of, um, we don't even really know what sequence that happened in. Mm -hmm. Very um, likely. So, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I think that it could feel like that's what happened, but I don't, I don't, you know. Yeah, we're not memory's saying a funny lying. thing. We're just saying that there's other alternatives to the story she could be, she's telling. Yeah. And I mean, I think she could believe that it happened that way, but. She was asleep. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're just waking up in a, from a dream and or whatever, and whatever, I, I don't know. It seems plausible to me that she could be, she could have had her friend on her mind and and the, then the phone rang a, a x number of minutes later 15 minutes is a nice number to round up to and and that's how she remembers it and she really believes that's what happened and that kind of solidified something in her brain but we don't really know that it happened in that order or that it happened at all that's right um, we don't and so another thing she says in her video is that um, this is the, her intro, her one video on her YouTube channel that's explaining her mediumship is that uh, never, never, ever she has experienced anything negative. And she says, you can set boundaries. I found this fascinating. She says, you can set boundaries. If they're not let, if the dead people are not letting you get any sleep, okay, I'm going to try to do this as a straight face that you can tell, like if your dad's showing up and he wants to talk to you all the time and your dad's dead that you can tell dad come back later that you need to get some sleep now and that you're setting boundaries with these dead people okay that's good to know and i'm doing this well don't i so she says and you should learn to set boundaries with dead people well what it, can it work the other way around because like i'd love to talk to my dad again oh my and gosh he I'm never he you know like i think of him once in a while but he's never really come through can well, i can you. i yeah you can do it can she i say can, can i set the boundary in the other direction can i say you know geez i'd really like to talk you know hear from you once are you in a busy, while are you busy in about an hour dad <laughs> yeah can you can you <laughs> i know we're laughing but it is absurd so she says and she mentions now this gets my goat she mentions children a lot she mentions mm -hmm. if your child is experiencing these things it's okay to let them know that it's our right if they're afraid to not be afraid that it's actually so she's mentioning children quite a bit probably because she said she had uh, a you know these experiences mm -hmm. from childhood but yeah. i i don't know but it freaks me out a little bit when anybody's telling any child that they could possibly be oh no that monster under your bed no it's actually a dead person that's trying to get hold of you don't go frank your closet kid it's grandma <laughs> it bothers me when they that you know i know uh thomas john reads young people and stuff to kids and I, that bothers me when it, there's a like if you're an adult okay whatever in some ways but when you're recruiting children that that's a little bit goes in the ick factor for me no yeah it's it's like in the abuse factor so she has um 3.6 thousand followers on facebook and she's tested and certified like you said that ain't tested and certified yeah her website she has an event the one that we're watching right now from 2021 was on her website and then there's another one for october of 2021 that was a 10 person reading 75 dollars per person over zoom and nothing else 
So if she's been sure. posting other events, there must be on her Facebook page somewhere. I didn't see them. They're not on her website. There's nothing else on her YouTube channel. But I did see that there were other videos on YouTube with her name. So she's been sure. doing videos, but they're, you know, other people's channels or something like that. So she, she seemed a little bit channel. uncomfortable with the big event. I th I think she, maybe she, uh, I got the sense um, that she This one right now, didn't... the one we're watching? Yeah. I, she she kind of um took her minute to get into it because she was she's like oh there's so many people i'm not used to this so maybe she doesn't like it. people janice 34 people i'm just what saying what i saw i think she would she she uh although even though there were 34 people and she appeared to be uncomfortable with reading that many people she was very specific about who she picked right, so right. anyway okay so on her on her own website, she's got testimonials from nine. No, no, no. It's on the tested by certified mediums, the the Mark Ireland website. There's nine testimonials, all positive. I wonder if Chat GTP was starting to write these tests. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if Chat GTP was starting to was you know people could just say, oh, I need all this my Yelp reviews, and I need, and they're just like. Uh, Amazon. Okay. I'm not giving anybody hints. Please don't take my advice to, <laughs> to do that, but I don't know. Okay. So you're ready to go to the, go into yeah. All right. So what we're going to show you now, this is 15 minutes. I'm going to break it up at least in half because it's too much to listen to everybody out there on Facebook, take notes and tell us what you saw. If Janice and I don't see it, we could, we could go for 10 hours. Janice and I are, we could do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it would be nice to hear from what other people. Yeah, yeah like, I'd like I, to hear what other people say because I'm, I'm, I just listened to this while I was out watering the garden, so I'm really not watching it as intently as probably Janice did. I'm sure she took better notes than I did. I just wait seventy five dollars and thirty five people. Daniel Reed says no, that was for her. Uh, oh yeah, that was for no the the one that she's in today. This is the mediumship summit that Thomas John arranged. There's five mediums, including Thomas John, they paid $45 to $55 to be at this summit. It's a four hour day, hmm. all these readings by all these mediums. And there's 35 people that showed up there. So 35 people times $50 is, was what they got. And they're all on a zoom screen. So you could do it out of your home. So you didn't have to travel anywhere. So if Thomas John has taken all that cut, or if he's giving part of it to each of these mediums or if in Tracy, who's there all day, I don't know. So it's not a big moneymaker today, but what this does is it's, it gives um, money to these people who get readings from them. They're like, oh, I've never heard of this Lauren Stark person and I'm going to get a reading from her. So this wasn't a lot of money. Yeah, Daniel says that's one hundred and seventy-five dollars, one hundred and fifty dollars. Oh no, he says fifty seventeen fifty. Thank you. My math, you know, is okay. Yeah, you're right, seventeen fifty. Uh, that's still nothing for four hours. But I guess if it gives you business and if they have books to sell or mediumship readings or I don't know, but um, the didn't um, this medium. No, no. Medium. I'm wondering if they were, yeah, if these are more new or newer mediums, so they're willing to to do something for free to maybe get customers or something. Well, it's notability. You know, you're you're starring with Thomas John. <laughs> He's a TV star. He's a He's TV a, star. He's been certified by Gary Schwartz, and he started <laughs> double testing with <laughs> double <laughs> testing. That double testing. So. <laughs> Yeah, Daniel says the first one is cheap. They hook you and then they get more. Yeah, and it's true. You know, yeah. it's like a drug, I guess. You give them a little bit and these people go, yeah. oh, can... it's a two for two year wait for Thomas John. I guess I'll get Lauren to give me one because she's got no weight. And I would think if you can get repeat customers, you wouldn't have to have a, a I mean, depending on what your lifestyle's like, but you wouldn't have a you wouldn't have to have thousands of repeat customers to 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 make a living at this you, i mean you, you just need a you know i don't know what the how, what the number would be but it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be like exorbitant to if you can just get a following well in and and you're making money on the side she's probably she's probably i don't know this for a fact but she's probably a stay-at-home mom with those three kids so anything she does beyond that is going to be 
extra income. Yeah. Do you think she's claiming this on the IRS? <laughs> I doubt it. Skinny says he has a, a two minute wait and he's free. <laughs> He'll give you a reading. Nice. Yeah, Kenny. Hey. I don't think you could live with yourself if you were if you were doing this and, and trying to play it off as being real. So uh, I doubt that. Okay. All right, let's play. So, let's see. Now you guys hope you're sitting down. Take notes. Some big, yeah, take notes. This is some. One thing that one thing that struck me is she said that she gives people evidence that they are here. So I hope oh. that people throughout this will look for the evidence. I I don't know. I looked for it, but I'm hoping other people can find it. Well, I I only got halfway through this uh, the first reading and halfway through the second reading, and I was watering my garden, so I wasn't totally clear. So there might be more evidence that I'm missing. Also, you guys look for what's missing that you would think would be there that that I always find fascinating too okay so let's go over to the let's see now I've got the right person yeah no yeah that's the one I want okay here we go yeah always want to kind of share how you we all have the ability to connect with our own loved ones and in every single reading that I give um, before I begin I always share my intention and it is always i want you to feel your loved ones in the reading i want you to have evidence that they are here and more importantly i want you to walk away feeling better connected to you to them yourself because you have that ability we all have that ability they're doing everything they possibly can to get our attention so i'm really um eager to share that for you. And one of the toughest things being a medium and seeing and dealing with people who have experienced a lot of loss is seeing people who have um, who come to me and they don't feel their loved ones at all, you know, and that is really difficult to see. So I want you to know that our loved ones, you know, connect with us in many different ways. Every single time I do a reading, um, each soul connects with me very differently. So sometimes I'll hear them, sometimes I'll see them, sometimes I'll feel, or I'll just have a knowing, or sometimes it'll be all of the above. So each soul I connect with will be very different. And just like we all have our own ways of, of loving and communicating ourselves, we're going to all have different ways of connecting to our loved ones. Um, so I want you to be aware of that and not be like, oh, well, I'm not connecting the same way that this person is or how come you know my um my daughter's receiving signs but i'm not you know um we're all connecting differently and it really isn't about whether or not they are connecting with us it is about understanding how they are connecting with us okay so one of the most common ways that they can communicate with us is through signs i'm sure that you've you know kind of had your own experiences of it and i have people who come to me and say you know is this a sign or is that a sign you know i have to say that receiving a butterfly or a cardinal isn't going to necessarily be a sign because google says so because you see one and you Google it or because a friend says, oh, I heard this, you know, signs are going to, you're going to be able to identify that it's a sign if it's a something that is significant to your loved one or connects. So if your, you know, mom loved bird watching and was obsessed with birds and had cardinals everywhere in her home, things like that, then of course she's going to send you that cardinal. Of course, that's going to be connected to her. It'll always be like something that will somehow connect to them. I had a, uh, a recent hey. reading where... I had a recent reading. Sorry. Oh, no, it's okay, Sherry. I had a recent reading where um, I was connecting with a husband in spirit, and he brought through that he was sending his wife little smiley faces. So the smiley faces are things that, like, every time he would write her a post-it note or a letter, he would end it with little smiley face. So that's something that he was still sending to her and still trying to let her know that he was around in that way so that was his sign so it was something that was connected to him in some way the second thing is that um it's going to be something unusual that gets your attention so again if it's that cardinal it's not going to be just the cardinal that flies by you know once it'll be something like oh gosh this cardinal keeps like coming up to me or it keeps coming up to the window and it's getting my attention here um it's going to be something very unusual here or uncommon something that you wouldn't usually see and then lastly it'll be something that consistently happens so say you're seeing your son's birth date on on a, uh, an a clock um and that's beautiful sign but um oftentimes it'll happen again and you'll get an email and it'll happen at that 
at that on you know his the time of his birth or his birth date and it'll keep happening so it'll be something that will connect with them it'll be something that's unusual or uncommon for you to see and then it'll be something that is happens consistently or kind of keeps happening that's kind of how you know it'll get your attention but sometimes i have people who say i am not receiving any signs whatsoever and when i ask them well what sign did you ask for from them they said well I just asked for a sign. And when you just simply ask for a sign, you could miss what they're trying to give you. And it could be right in your face, but you have no idea that they're sending it to you because you really don't even know what you're looking for, right? So I just ask that, you know, try asking your loved ones for something specific. So you can say, dad, send me a blue train to let me know that you are around because your father collected trains and his favorite color is blue. So ask him for something specific and then give him time to get it to you. So don't say, I need to see this within the next hour, dad, right? Are we, they don't play that game uh, in that way, but give them time and be open to, uh, you know, however they can get that to you as far as time wise and then also be open to how they may send you that blue train so maybe on a big billboard and maybe um in a store you see a little boy with a thomas the blue engine you know piece here or it may literally be a blue a blue train so ask for something specific give them time to get it to you and be open to how you may they may send it okay and and most importantly when you receive that sign trust and believe that it is them um because they spend so much energy getting that sign to you that it's really important that we just simply acknowledge it thank them for it here okay i had a a very good friend of mine that passed a few years back and her name was christina and after when i found out of her passing on her Facebook page, there was a, a ladybug. I don't, I don't see ladybugs. It, it's just not something I'd ever see. So I said, okay, Christina, our sign is going to be a ladybug. And she's like, when you, when you get a minute, when you can, please just send me this sign. It was later that day I got home from a walk with my children and I went out back and not one ladybug, but thousands of ladybugs were swarming all around me and all up and down my house and on myself and my children. And it, she got her message loud and clear to me that she was okay. But all I did was simply ask, right? And she still sends them to me. So um, I, I see at my son's practice, like sometimes he'll have a ladybug on him. A few months ago, I, I had a ladybug on my night table, my nightstand first thing in the morning it's her way of just checking in so start creating that own language with them and start you know asking simply asking for something specific so we can recognize it invite them to show you signs you know invite them on your car ride together when you're taking a, a car ride invite them on a trip that you have planned invite them into your meditation or invite them you know to visit you in your dreams and dreams is a really common way that they will connect with us right so there are visitation dreams and then there are dreams right the visitation dreams aren't going to be the ones that you don't remember you will always remember these visitation dreams they're going to be so real that you're going to say how the you know how the heck are you here because you passed away right so there's going to be something so vivid and real about it and you're going to most of the time be in your right mind with those visitation dreams and not everyone receives visitation dreams from their loved ones and i have a lot of people who come in you know kind of frustrating because frustrated because they're saying oh my my son is coming to my daughter in a dream um and his best friend but not me why am i not receiving the dreams and it's not that he's not around you or that he's choosing to come to them instead of you you know if a if he got that message to you you know if his best friend called his mom and and said i had a dream um 
you know, with your son in it, then that message was also for you. He was able to get that message to you. And that friend was acting as a medium. And sometimes, you know, um, again, we all connect very differently, but especially grief can cloud our connections in, um, in dreams and things like that. So please know that, that if that message got to you, it was for you, even if you're not receiving in the way that you may want to. Another way that our I have some pity on you guys. I can see people going, oh my God, stop her. <laughs> Make it stop. Make, Make it stop. stop. <laughs> uh. I can't remember, Janice. This is a really good example of priming your audience because what she's saying is don't doubt it. Don't doubt if you're not getting, if you're not getting a sign from your loved one, you don't okay. doubt it. Um, make an intention <clears throat> that you want to see something, a blue train, and then guess what? You're going to see blue trains all over the place. <laughs> if you give it enough time, like get a kid's book and open it up and there'll be a blue train. Blue train. They even have a yeah. book series so, about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm making, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. The comments are getting in Facebook hilarious. Uh, Kenny says, I feel like I just got sucked into a timeshare presentation. Yes. <laughs> Rob Palmer says, at least timeshares are real. <laughs> That's, <laughs> oh true. God, That's true. That's true. The comments are so hilarious. You guys. So we've, guys. we've talked a little bit about, and I won't talk a lot about FC, but we did talk, we have talked about how there's an overlap and some of the things that, that um, she says you need, it needs to be significant in your life. It needs to be unusual. And it unusual. To, yeah, unusual. Wait, wait, what? And it needs to consistently happen. So um you can make what is unusual fit those three criteria everything if you're motivated said, enough. Well, yeah, it's it's everything she said was not unusual. Right. Right. Well, I wondered if the ladybugs are the are the real the naturally the the um ladybugs that are Ah, there's a the there's an invasive species Ooh. that will come out and they kind of they bite and they kind of attack you and they oh they, no they'll, you're attacking yeah. ladybugs they'll kind of no, do yeah they're, yeah they're they're, <laughs> they're not very nice <laughs> Daniel um, Reed says in West Virginia that happens twice a year where the swarms ladybugs yeah so you know like what time of year would did this happen when she saw a sign from her friend you know I, I just wondered about that what was it um, a, a Stuart Vice left a really pertinent message at the very beginning? Um, we were talking about or he mentioned presumed competence and and that's something that's in the FC world as well as um as this, where you um you don't test you you I don't know how to explain it very well. Um you assume that the in the case of FC, the person that you're working with, or apparently with the spirits as well, this works as well. You assume that they have the ability to give you a message and you don't test that. You just go on that ability because if you test it, if you doubt it, then it's not going to work. So you won't get your message if, oh, you, if you, right. So if, if you you're critically if you're, thinking about it, say that again, if you're critically thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. If you doubt it. Yeah. And I, I, actually, as I'm saying that, it's sort of kind of like she, she comes across like really nice and, you know, like this is a positive thing, but she's kind of blaming the the sitter if the person doesn't come through because, oh, you're being a doubter. Um, and so there's maybe a little bit of peer pressure there that, that I hadn't really realized until just now um, that, you know, it's you just have to you just have to wait long enough and hope long enough. And like, where is that line where, you know, it's maybe the person isn't going to be able to get through, you know, like, what, do you keep, do you keep hoping, give how much time is enough time? Is it a week or two years or 10 years or 15 years? Or what is it the you know, to, to get that sense that your loved one is coming through? Just asking. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm curious about I, I don't know where the cutoff is. I, I think oh, it makes sense if you want it to make sense. 
Right. Well, yes, yeah, so that was the other thing that I had in my notes is that this is a really good out. Um, we all connect differently. And, you know, um, if if the sign doesn't come, it will come in a little bit. So like she's given herself huge amounts of room to be wrong in her guesses. You know, like she, nothing she says, you know, that she can make mold whatever scenario that she's spinning here into just about anything, um, which I thought was, and none of this is evidence, by the way, I'm still looking for the evidence part. You have to, you have to have an intention, you have to feel them, you have evidence that they are there, and you, so that you can be better connected to them and you, or, and yourself. Um, the, the other thing I had, the other question I had was, she said they're doing everything possible that to get your attention and then later she talks about how much energy it takes for them to to produce this message and it's like how do you know it take they they might just you know like they just might be able to like their spirits they i was going to say they could just wave their hand but they don't have any hands right <laughs> you know like i don't know how they like push their energy towards you they'll say she says later is that it's they appear as light yes they're light yeah so what do they just make themselves like a little dimmer or a little brighter to get their message across like how does that work does that take a lot of energy to do that like i'm i'm concerned that these beings in energy, that, are, that means you're supposed to take a drink in kenny biddle's world world anytime he uses the take a drink. energy incorrectly on his skeptical help bar that's on saturday friday nights thank you very much you're supposed to take a drink <laughs> okay and he says they um, have jazz hands <laughs> so yeah i'm, I'm, oh my God. I'm like these are questions that i i'm that like i'd love to find this kind of stuff on their websites well each um. one is different i want to understand and you and i had this discussion before so you know where i'm going anybody listen to this heard they're making ladybugs or coins or whatever material wise right you sign are these ladybugs that they're bringing from over there to transport them to here? Like, are they, are they like using a transporter and putting, or are they reaching out with their little hands and moving them and putting them there? Or are they like 3D projecting them? Like, is the ladybug that they see as a sign, is it a real right. ladybug? Right. Is it a and how did they, bug? is it, yeah. can you touch it? Could it eat? Will it bite you? I mean, what? And like, how did they? How did they know? Like the exact minute she was going to be in the inner garden from her walk. How did they know? Like, did they all just like, oh, we're, we're like a surprise party? Like, were they like? They didn't wait. They're all like under the crap. Just like, here she comes. Here she comes to the kids. All right, one, two, three. Go. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean. I don't know. It's really odd to to find ladybugs in a garden. No, um, really. Right. Really. So that how unusual is that? Yeah, and, if you're going to have something unusual, and it has to happen consistently, it happens. It has to happen consistently. So just once, a one. She said, if it's just a one time occurrence, it it might it may not be a sign. It has to be consistent, right? And how does she know? She's just saying these things with confidence. Right. Right. Because she's certified. <laughs> but we can't find any evidence of this rules. Where are these rules? Right. That's I'd like to I'd like to know where the oh, rules the are that she has. Where is this rule hmm. book that of mediumship that we know is real and is there was a phrase she used that I thought was, oh, when she was talking about the visitation dreams, that that most of the time you're in your right mind. I'd like to know what she, I'd like to know what she meant by that. I like in your dream, like most of the time you're in your right mind. Yeah, well, it's. Really I mean, I don't know waking if most of the time I'm in my right mind. Oh, so, you know, yeah. like, how would you know if you were sleeping that you were in your right mind? <laughs> Kate, 
Kate Max says they're manipulating the natural world, summoning ladybugs, but not manifesting ladybugs. <laughs> Rob is Rob is being very Rob Palmer is being very um very Rob Palmer right now and being very precise. The rules are Hitchens razor, that which can be claimed without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. I mean, he's right. That takes all the fun out of it, but it's he's right. Right. Well, I mean, that's 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 where ultimately I would end up with this particular person, <laughs> right? From what looking at her website, but Ooh. Um, so well, far I'm no gonna... evidence. I I I really wish I I really wish she said there's got to be evidence that they are there. Okay. They are here, and, and he's got a good statement. He says, "If there's any unpopped popcorn in your bag, that's a sign that spirits love you." <laughs> right i like that right. one actually that one's that one's that's good i'm loved all the time Let's which see by heard, have... i don't know but it's a spirit loves me so i'm thinking we fast forward through the rest of this woman's spiel yeah. it's another 10 minutes what do you guys say out there in facebook land people in youtube land are going okay i'm done too get to it but i but i can mention what what else she talks about here is she says that spirit will put the people in front of you. Oh, I'm getting a spam call right now. Ooh, that's scary. Um, uh, that um, oh, this was spirit world was trying to call me. She talks about how people are, your, your spirits will send somebody to you that looks just like you. So yes. if you're at a baseball game right. and there's a guy in front of you who looks a lot like your brother or somebody who's died, yep. they did that. They made them look that way. Or yes, I mean, it's not like it's only there for the moment. Yeah. She said that she said that when she reads some people, sometimes they turn into the person that the the spirit, like in her, she has visions or something. <laughs> um so okay, so let's go to I think she's does she have QA? She does. Yes. Okay. I think I'm going to start on the Q and A because I think there were some good ones in here. Let's, let's go with it. You guys. Um, I forgot what I was doing. I'm going to um, go to the media player. That's what I'm going to do. You know, trust that it's them and, and that will be the foundation of, of your connection with your loved ones. So Tracy, did I, did I meet that time there? Is that okay? Oh, I don't know if Tracy's there. I know I only had a, I had a certain amount of time to talk here, um, but I I, I hope oh, Tracy. I, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, uh, I but I hope that you guys that there was something in it that maybe kind of makes you think or or um, kind of move forward in deepening your own connection with that there. So um, Tracy, should I start kind of tuning in here? Is that okay? Yeah. yeah whatever. Whatever you want. Yeah, I don't know. Yep, okay. Thomas. Let's see what time does Thomas not come on. You've got no that you have a you did start a little bit earlier. I what? I you did start a little bit earlier. Yeah, so, I did. Yeah, just go whenever you feel, whenever spirit is ready for you. All right. All right. So let me just see. There's a lot of um people on the phone. Oh, I know, Kim. It says help the ladybugs, yeah. Oh, and Kelly, I get the visitation dreams a lot and it's so peaceful. How about connecting through orbs in a picture? Absolutely. So they'll use, uh, Kelly, they'll use your um, electronics. They'll use, of course, they'll let themselves know, be known in a picture as well through orbs. So sometimes um, they'll absolutely do that, but then they'll also be like flashes of light that won't even be connected to a picture. So stay you know, open to that. Laura says, I get signs all the time, even with coins like a dime and a penny. Awesome. Yes, Laura, that's exactly right. And it'll be things that'll be consistent. So I'm sure that Laura, you noticed that yourself that there was something that is very consistent, right? Yeah. Um, and Tracy feathers. Oh, gosh. Yeah, feathers. Um, thank you, Tony. Is this also true with spirit guides, not just with family? Absolutely. Start creating your, and, and Beth said that here. I don't know if I see you, Beth, 
but um oh there you are beth hi yeah start creating your own language with them you know it, they can even offer guidance through the signs that you offer you know so you can ask um you can ask start creating and say a, a turtle may be my sign to slow it down take it easy it's coming right an eagle might be a sign for you to soar fly like you know and ask your guides you know set up this little symbol library this new language with them it can absolutely be through guides yes 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 what about waking up at 3 33 a.m absolutely grant yeah absolutely they're doing that to get your attention Okay, so especially you're not even saying three o'clock, 3.30, you're saying 3.33, right? So you have to, and it's easy to Google Grant and be like, what does 3.33 mean? And, and, and oftentimes I do that, but, pay, but see if you Google those numbers, what does that mean for you, right? Like, does that feel right? Um, so use your own guidance system instead of uh, that. But they're doing, a lot of times what I've found in readings, they'll say, that they'll wake you up in the middle of the night it's because we're not really paying attention during the day and that's like the time where we will be able to feel them or they're asking you to sit with them um so there so when you wake up at 3 33 like hey thank you thank you for just showing me that you're close and sit with them they're asking you to come closer because they're working with you to allow you to feel them better Okay, because I actually feel Grant, you are working on that yourself. So you're working on improving that. That's one of your goals. That's why they're doing that. Cindy, um, what about using Van Prog, uh, talking to heaven cards and angel oracle cards? Absolutely. So cards are a great tool to connect in. Um, I, I have cards, I use them and um, when I feel drawn, but uh, you can absolutely connect to your loved ones. They'll use whatever they can to get your attention. They'll use whatever they can to connect with you. So if you're putting the intent of connecting and you get cards and you feel drawn to James Van Prague cards, beautiful, absolutely, trust that. And that's the thing. It's not about just the things I shared today. It's about your own personal connection and trusting that, yeah. So yeah, thank you guys for that question. All right. Um, I'm going to connect in. I'm going to just kind of start going if you guys don't mind. Um, I have never done a group where I'm seeing just people's names. So it'll be really fun. Uh, it'll be very interesting. Bear with me here. Um, usually I'll, I'll kind of see someone and, and feel drawn, but we'll, we'll just go with it. Okay. Um, let me just kind of clear out my own personal things. <sighs> Okay, so um, I'm going to, I, I heard mom, um, hold on one second. I heard the name Tracy though. So one second, there is a Tracy that's on here and I, it's not you, Tracy. Um, I don't Aww. think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Hold on. Let me just go a little further here. And I know there, I see that there's another Tracy, but she's um, not there. Um, so it might be that, but I do feel, gosh, this is so interesting. I actually feel like this woman would not be from the United States. I feel like there would be some sort of um, no, good, or different, um, there's something different about um, the way she's speaking here. So I know that she's not necessarily from um, the States. I also feel like there'd be head dementia or something with a, a head that would be involved here and she's showing me february 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 so for me uh months are usually connected to them or someone closely that um that she's trying to acknowledge here so birthday anniversary date of passing i actually feel like there's two significances in february here so i feel like there would be two dates that are really important in february here Does anyone understand that? Here, let me see. I know Tracy. Tracy. Me, Tracy. Uh, yeah, the other Tracy. Sorry, Tracy. <laughs> um, Tracy, I don't know why I did hear that name, Tracy. 
it could literally be that there's a connection to the name Tracy also, but Tracy is mom in spirit for you. I have a mom in spirit. Okay. And I know you kind of left, but I did hear your name. So there was a draw there. Is there, um, uh, would there be a connection to mind or issues with the brain with mom? Um, no, no. Okay. And is there I also heard Gary, Gary or Garrett? There's Gary. Gary's my father. Okay. He's gotcha. still here. Yes. So I do feel this is mom that's trying to get attention. They were separated though. Yes. Yes. So Good I know work. that they Good were work. together. Yeah, I know that they weren't together at the time, but it's just her way of trying to acknowledge herself here. She's also showing me these ups and downs that she would have experienced. I'm going to try to pin you because I've got. She showed me these ups and downs that she would have experienced here in the physical world. I do feel mentally, actually. So I feel like that's maybe why she's showing me that. Do you understand oh. these highs and lows? Well, maybe, maybe some anxiety. Okay. What anxiety? And, and, but she would always have to have things in a certain place, right? Or have to have it done. The way that she would have liked it. I feel like that's where the anxiety might tie in, actually. And didn't we feel that her care could have or should have been different? Yes. Okay. Maybe, She's maybe. Showing, meaning that someone here, Tracy, is thinking it's like if if this person it was done differently, then maybe she would have still been here in a way, right? It felt like there was something done differently that we feel shouldn't have been that way. What she's making me feel is absolutely not. She's like saying that there was like this series of events that happened that did lead to her passing and it was kind of back to back to back, right? And she's showing that it, as chaotic as it was and, and as many questions that we may have, it what you know was her time and she's showing me my sign that. for that that it was her time to pass do you understand the connection to february i know you kind of walked away but that was something that was said sorry my dog yeah oh, she okay. passed she passed in february and wouldn't there be oh, a her birthdays i'm sorry her, she passed in january her birthday's february 21st perfect oh i was gonna say okay um actually there's a second significance to february almost like she's referring to someone else in february as well so um there would be actually no she's saying march but i did see the back to back in february like there would be another significance in february are you sure there's no anniversary tracy um well my sister's husband had his birthday in february but they're okay. divorced. they're divorcing she might be talking about him <laughs> i don't know okay hold on um so Again, I know you walked away for a sec, but there, she did show me these two significant dates in February here. And, um, but she wouldn't have known that they, that they are separating or, or that they are separated, right? Right. But she would, your mom is very feisty and very strong here. And it feels like you would know exactly how she would feel about this in the way. And it felt like, but she needs your sister to know that she has her back, that she is right there with her here, okay? She's also talking about the artist. Who's the artist? Well, I think there's a lot of artists in our family. We all okay. like to paint. Beautiful. I actually feel like it's a form of meditation for you guys. She connects in with you guys. She doesn't make me feel like she was in any way. It felt like other people here. She was too. Oh, she was an artist? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we'd all get together and paint. So maybe she's saying she didn't think she was very good at it, but she, she did it. <laughs> she painted. Okay. Yeah. Got it. But she's, but you're saying she is an artist. Well, because she, we all painted together and she did make who? art. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, who, maybe her cousin, Trina, who really is a professional artist. I was artist. just going to say, who literally has sold or Yeah, she's a professional artist, her cousin. Perfect. That's what I feel like. And, but she was not just her cousin. There's like a very close connection and bond, like almost sister, right? Yeah. That's what it feels like. So I know she's just trying to acknowledge her. I know that she's celebrating you right around now too. So she keeps showing me celebration, celebration right around here. I feel though, um, she, she does want to talk about her passing. She's shown me issues with speaking or communicating here. So she does show me that she wasn't able to communicate at the time of her passing. You understand that? And she yes. shows you just walking out, right? So 
was was there someone that you'd understand that was just there and then left and that's when mom passes um well just her husband was there but were you just there with her i i came right after she had already passed i came like right when she had passed i mean she was still warm and i saw lights all around um but i i wasn't there when she took her last breath gotcha that's that makes absolute sense for the sign that she showed me it's that we're always there we were just there in some way but we were not physically there for her passing right um i also saw a, a black dog or a black animal that has passed as well and gosh i might be moving forward tracy but i saw and also jerry jerry is my good friend that passed away suddenly Okay, and do you know that there would be heart issues with him? Yeah, he had a massive heart attack. And um, and do you know of the black dog that would be? There's a we. My mom did animal rescue, so there'd be a lot of animals. Okay, gotcha. Uh, there I'm should be. I actually felt like this black dog was an animal that would have been passed down, like someone else had to take care of this animal in a way. I know you're saying rescue, but I feel like someone else had to take care of another animal in the family, like some or a friend. Oh, okay. She took a she took a couple of dogs from a friend that passed away. Okay. Might have been um, one of those. One was one. And and she showed me like being this big advocate for like a lot of different things in her life, but I know that she's passing that down to you and saying that like that's what you are like you're very brave within the things that you do that you do. Um, and it feels like you honor her in that way with Jerry though know that he's just coming in giving you a lot of love like he loves you very much and he says that you think of him often. And even though you didn't get to say that goodbye he thinks you. he's also talking about son 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 here so. Um, hold on is it your son. Why well, have a son but he might he's probably talking about his son. Okay. hold on. But he wasn't connected to your son then. No, I mean, okay. he, he knew him, but right. And um, okay, well, let me just see what he's trying to say here. He's acknowledging son, so I believe it is his son that he's around here. He's also talking about. Um, I'm getting a couple of different things. I also heard Winnie. <laughs> is it? That is a very odd thing, actually. Winnie. I don't know a Winnie. Is there a black and white cat? <laughs> I don't usually see cats because uh, I, I don't know why, but um, I'm seeing a black. And I have white. a black and white cat. I, okay. He had a cat. I'm not sure what color his cat was when it passed. Okay. I'd be surprised if you did know that here. <laughs> right? I'll have to ask his why. Um, but what, but let me just say this with Jerry, what he shows is you kind of coming in and helping in a lot of ways afterwards, even though this would just have been a friend of yours, he's thanking you for that. Weren't you guys involved in an organization, Tracy? Together? We, we worked together at a salon for years. And then when he passed, I ended up taking it over. Perfect. Know that he's around you within this. It feels like this is something we put a lot of time and energy into, and it feels like we've kind of expanded it in a lot of ways. But at mm -hmm. one point, you had you you decided to stop. Is that correct, or you stepped away? I know that doesn't make maybe logical sense to say that, but are you thinking about something? Sometimes I think about it. Um. And Barbara. Well, I have a client named Barbara, but I don't. In the salon, but it, was he connected to Barbara there also? No. Okay. Um, it did feel like it was, it, just so you have it, just so you're aware, it is someone in somehow um, connected in that uh, space with you guys. So I did hear Barbara. And it's funny because he's joking about like extra money or I don't know what this is, yeah. um, like bringing money. So Barbara's not like a really big tipper or something like that. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> okay, that's fine. I want you to remember that, okay, just in case that comes up. It's like almost like he's helping bringing in this money for some reason within Thank this you, Jerry. place. But he like is is very light and joking about things. And he also says that you have his picture there. I have a I have his cologne there and some angel wings on it. His cologne and some angel wings. Okay. Ah, uh, but I saw his picture too. I, I have his picture in the door. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So just know I that he had to come in today. I'm so glad. I just. Oh, wanted. did you? Oh my yeah. gosh. Oh, perfect. Um, I'm, I'm glad we waited waited there there for you. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tracy. All right, I'm gonna try to. Oh dear. Oh dear. I feel like she might have some notes about somebody. You really think so? Because I think it's cold reading. You think it's hot reading. Let's see what the, I'm, I'm curious what the Facebook chat will be. I was thinking, <laughs> Kenny said, praise Odin, it's over. <laughs> yeah. There's two more, Kenny. Um, there were a couple times when, like, oh, when she one. said yeah. Gary or Garrett, and Gary was the father. Um, I don't know. I felt like I felt like she had some of it, maybe not all of it. May, you know, maybe like from other re we were saying that some of these um, psychics appeared to sit in on other sessions. And maybe she picked up a few tidbits about yeah, the people because uh, one of the, she was very specific about she didn't do the game where you're like, oh, I'm I'm getting a mother and, you know, she might have some children and then you have five people raise their hand. She was very specific about I want Tracy. I don't want the I don't want Tracy Thomas John's assistant. I want the other Tracy. So that kind of made me feel like she. um she was looking for a specific person. I didn't feel like all of it was cold reading, but I, I don't I what like I know. It was all cold reading, except she did bring up a name. I think it was Jerry, and then yep. she said something about heart condition, and I thought that almost sounds specific because she hit. But then I thought no, because heart disease is the number one killer of of, of uh, adult males. Yeah, cancer. So. I don't know. And she just said, know. is there a heart problem with this person? Not like he died of a heart person uh, problem. So All right. she said heart issue. Kate says the fact that she had to walk away to deal with her dog and then dogs were brought up. Wow. What are the chances? <laughs> That's I true. Know, I didn't think of that. <laughs> uh, and then um, she also said earlier, Kate, Kat said, if she doesn't see cats often, then she clearly can't be trusted. I'd have to agree. <laughs> I don't know why I don't see cats. Like, well, are you saying they're inferior or something? Uh, my, you know, maybe she thinks cats are like like the don't people feel like they're evil? Cats are evil. Like, well, yeah. I, I don't. But okay, going back to some of the other things people said. Um, She got the artist thing, sort of got the artist thing, except she was like, oh, I don't know. The, the, the artist woman was working really saying? hard to fill in the answers. You know, it's sort of like you don't have to sell things to be an artist, folks. Sorry. <laughs> and what does artist mean? Music, drawing, photography. Right. That's gardening. true. This just sounds like a generic term. Um so maybe she should just slicker like a little bit more slick than the other one that I that we saw last week. You know, like she she's quicker on her feet. Daniel Reed says that whenever she picked out Tracy, it was it looked like she was scanning the screen to look for somebody to respond to. But didn't she say that the woman kept walking away from the screen? I wonder why she picked her if she kept wandering around. Because she needed a Tracy. She knew that's who she was going to pick. Maybe she picked her ahead of she time. She saw it on a piece of paper before she said, oh, Tracy, she's got, you think it's, that Tracy might have been read earlier and that that's how she got picked her? Yeah. Cause, I mean, I felt like there was enough. I don't know. I mean, I, this is probably only the, 
third or fourth reading I've ever seen. So like um, other people will have more experience with this than I do. But my feeling was that she she had a few details about this person that she could have gathered just from having lunch with the person, you know, and then. then, Yeah, um, I I don't know. know. The thing about she. (laughs) She was having difficulty speaking as she died or when she was dead or about to die or I was like, really, really? What are the (laughs) odds of that? She's not communicating when she's dying and then the dog oh my gosh people and then being there and not being there too for the dead for the dead i mean like if you know somebody's oh oh, oh, you mean when she said oh i walked in and she's still warm to the touch that was kind of creepy (laughs) but uh the the what's her name lauren was like oh yeah well yeah i mean she covered what i did notice was that she doesn't take no for an answer. She covers it up really well. Like she's skill, she's skillful at that, either keeping the conversation going or distracting her a little bit or or just saying, oh, you know, getting enough information from the, the sitter to be able to cover up what, you know, what she had said in the first place that wasn't quite right, but then she adjusted it when she got a response from the sitter. So I thought she was a very quick thinking on her, you know, like quick thinking person. They were when she mentioned the dog, people were <laughs> I like Daniel reads the best. He says it was a grim for Mary Potter. <laughs> um I'm getting a son. I'm getting son. And I'm thinking, well, I first thing I thought of was the sun in the sky. I did too. I, I wrote that vacation into some sunny location. And then she starts saying something about a man. Oh, yeah. What is that guy? Who was the guy that came through? Jerry. Jerry. And then I thought, Jerry. And it turns out to be a good friend who died suddenly. And that's when she said about the heart attack. And then something about Barbara. And I'm thinking, oh, well, maybe Jerry ended up having an affair with Barbara. And, you know, I mean, and she just, well, maybe she's not a good tipper. And something about money. And, oh, my gosh, it was right. just so oh. big. That's what I was going to say. Random. She, Yeah, when she was wrong, she she says, just so you have it. You know, she didn't say, no, I wasn't wrong. I mean, I wasn't right on that one, you know, whatever. She, just so you have it. Like, it will be right if you think about it hard enough and give it enough time, then it probably will be right. Uh, Something with said, money. Oh, yeah. Daniel says she said the mom wasn't artistic, but the sitter said she was. I'm not quite sure I remember it that way, but that's the nice thing is everybody's looking they're watching the same video we are. So they're going to see things we, I didn't see. Um, So the, okay, here's what people think about. I think it was cold reading all the way through. Okay. Um, Kenny says, I think it was a mixed mix. Uh, David says it was cold reading. Rob Palmer says it was bad cold reading. Daniel says it was terrible. And um, Daniel says she was so bad, I can't even see it being a hot read. And then. Um, yeah. I just thought she kept looking down and looking at her notes. I thought there, I thought she might have notes in her lap or something. Your notes are say, <laughs> you know, say this. Um, Kat says the redirect is strong with her. Did you see, did you think of it as redirect a lot of that? Yeah, well, I think that's what I meant when I said she doesn't take no for an answer. Like she's really yeah. quick at at making it sound like she actually had the right answer when she didn't. Oh, Daniel Reed says, "I'm a hot read." R e e d. Oh, that's awful. I love puns. Boom, <laughs> boom. That was great. Um, yeah, I and Kenny says she kept saying her the way he's her. She's not wrong. You're wrong yeah it wasn't her fault the sitter's fault was yeah there yeah okay. she's like so that crazy. with the dead people too you know like if it's not you know the whole family was artistic then the psychic said but not mom and tracy said mom painted too but maybe she thought she wasn't good yeah um february march what about the months first she said i think i think uh I think this is the one where 
she really messed up because she starts on with February, February, yep. February two times. Yeah, two times. Says, Oh, her birthday's in February. Oh no, it's not February. It's did she say March or June, January? She says Jan no, she passed in January. Birthday was in February, I think. And yes, she first started saying it was February. Then she comes back and said, "No, no, that was wrong. It's January." And then she's like, "Well, it could be my brother-in-law's birthday who just passed." Right. But he's they're getting a divorce. So I don't know, maybe she wants to talk about him and she starts and then Tracy's kind of giggles a little bit like, why would somebody want to talk about my living brother-in-law's birthday that right. is about to be my ex-brother-in-law? And then um, didn't the medium say, did she say, um, she said something about trying to remember it now she says something about it being somebody will remind us right now but i think she said they're making me laugh is what they're doing um daniel says two things were in february and kat says two february dates and then tracy says it was january 21st she that she's talking about so that was wrong what was it uh, i have february 21st but that's what I, I could be wrong. Maybe she, maybe she trans. She, I know that it was. She said February at first, and then she moves it to January. Yeah, I could have written it down. You know, it's interesting. She started off with somebody not from the U.S. with an accent and dementia or something with the head, and all that was wrong. Yeah. Oh, and somebody mentioned that they said, "Why would she call her mom in the afterlife?" To whenever if she speaks another language they probably didn't use the word mom they use some other word so oh, that's true I, I guess she's trying to say well if you're a medium and you're seeing things you're seeing symbols and you've learned to use those symbols like emo emojis emojis oh, i can't say the word it's i i think i think some of these psychics make it sound like i'm just seeing emojis and that emoji when i see a birthday cake that means they're acknowledging somebody's birthday when I see a feather, that means somebody's travel. I, but then they go into the specific stuff. So, hey, Kate says, I mean, Kat says, February, February 21st, and then it became January 21st. Oh, and Kenny says, English is a universal language of the afterlife. It's like air traffic okay. control. They all hey. have to speak English if they're going to be, uh, because, you know, you got to be all on the same side. Oh, okay. With the brother-in-law, Kat's got it. You know how your mom would feel about that, but she hasn't your sister's side. I I remember now what else I heard. Um, the medium says, well, she wouldn't know about that or something like that. She goes, um, if it's your brother-in-law who's about to be divorced, your mother doesn't already know about the, I guess, the divorce. I'm thinking... Would it, why wouldn't she know if she's watching you all the time and I don't know. right let's go to let's go to jerry because i thought that was fascinating she just throws out the name jerry and this woman's like automatically connecting with a person that she was she says it was a good friend that she worked at a salon with which the media missed completely she didn't mention any that it was somebody at work i'm getting a person who you worked with who died suddenly of a heart attack his name is jerry and he wants to connect with barbara who was a bad tipper <laughs> right it's all about and he says um why so did he she didn't say where he passed away either she just said he died he died suddenly was he at the salon or was he at home and and or or in between somewhere and he had a son why is he coming to, oh he loved you very very much and he knows you think of him often i thought that was kind of creepy and then because he was married and um so on and then she says something about a photo i'm getting a picture and she goes well i have his she say perfume with wings on it something like that perfume cologne or something with wings on it at the salon and then i thought if the medium is seeing a picture then describe it to us right it doesn't look like 
is, right. What does he look he's, like? And what, in his what Halloween costume like? in the year 1999. Uh, yeah, 19, what was he, he was standing a, at the tell us what the picture looks like that's right evidence. i'd like to see that right colleen um colleen cat says it's cologne that cologne. that's what said cologne but why would you keep cologne with with wings on it i guess if that was his thing he put it on people after he shaved them he'd go all right now let's put or mm. <laughs> i don't know anyway so, so that was pretty- awful that was just awful. You really yeah, it was it was chaotic. It was chaotic to listen to. Like she wasn't like weaving a story. She was just like spewing out a bunch of information and hoping right. something stuck. I didn't see anything in there that I thought was hot reading except for the word um Jerry and that connected, but it connected because it's just a common word. And Jerry Ooh. is Gary, is Gary or Garrett? A common maybe that's a common name too i don't know kind of sounds like garrett gary jerry but he got that right away that she got that right away gary's my father i mean that's was one of the oh that's right she did get that's why that's why your father is jerry she said who is jerry uh, yeah gary or garrett she said and and the sitter said gary's my father okay so that is interesting so So that's why i'm wondering hot that's why I was wondering why, you know, like there were a couple really quick responses from the sitter. And I'm wondering if she just knew, she may not have known all of it. I don't think all of it was hot reading, but I wondered if there were a few tidbits that she'd picked up along the way. Yeah. Like during right. the day. There could have been an earlier reading with this person and we'll have to go back if I find it because I'm watching these out of order. I probably shouldn't be doing that. And when you're watching the first video and you do a video on it, like on this channel that we're watching that I hope everybody subscribed to um, it now, you can go over and subscribe to Psychics Explained. But if, um, as I'm watching them, you know, I'm not waiting and watching all four and then putting together videos. It just would never happen if I did it that way. But you're watching the first video and you do a response video, which is what this is. I don't know what's going to happen at the end. So you you don't know if this woman had a reading earlier in one of the sittings I haven't evaluated yet. Or just put something in the chat like you were saying earlier. They were they were Oh yeah. Like obviously she's Lauren is True. tuned into the chat because she was asking she was answering questions out of the chat. So that you know that's running and you're absolutely right if if another psychic had said um getting a g you know this person could have said you know gary my my father's name is jerry yeah she could have said that in chat and we would never see it because we can't see the chat yeah yeah and we can't see the other people on the screen right we weren't there for their lunch break right people and it was a common thing that people would say Whenever you're going to a mediumship reading, people would wander around, and I've done this myself when I've done stings in person, is you go and you stand in line like at the bathroom. Women, you know, is usually a line, and we would say, oh, I'm so excited to be here. Who is it you want to see? Who is it you're hoping to come through? I'm hoping it'll be my mom. Who do you want it to be? And you're just trying to get some information out of them, and somebody could easily have said something of the sort. Who is it you want to be in touch with today? And somebody could have said, I hope my father, Jerry, comes through. I hope my father comes through. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, what was his? Did he die young? What did he die of? What was his name? Or whatever. And and it's just innocently. They don't know that somebody's there fishing for the information. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So people, I think, have kind of gotten out of, uh, they're done with their comments. Do you have anything else you want to say on that one? Because we're going to go to the second reading, you guys. Hope you're all sitting down. Sure. Are you all sitting down? Any else, Janice? No, not for so, this one. So I think the consensus of the people who are watching this on Facebook is is, is cold. But with a possibility that there might have been, like you said about the Jerry comment, uh, uh, a little bit of knowledge beforehand because the sitter watched. But she had all the all the classics. Oh, hey, you guys, what was missing? everything my god we don't have names who's barbara why don't you just tell us who barbara is 
you know, if you're in contact with these people and they're telling you specific things, like supposedly they're doing, and she's getting personalities. I'm not sure how that personality stuff comes through. Because if somebody's sending you emoji kind of signs, like pictures of eagles and feathers and so on, how does that resonate with her to be able to say, oh, she was a very funny, outgoing person, or, you know, I'm getting this kind of, you know, personality types. How does she, how does she, um, I mean, that almost doesn't make sense. If I'm feeling a happy, are they feeling energy? Like, are they feeling a happy energy? Are they feeling a well, she said going energy? Yeah, I mean, she said earlier that some of the signs are are feeling chilly or having a you know getting a certain smell. I mean, I don't know if that's for the sitters though, um, and having a knowing. I don't know what that means. Um, you just it means what you, you just, wanted to mean. Yes, you just go in the room and you know that somebody's that the person that that passed. Um, that used to sit on the edge of the bed is sitting on the bed. You just that know that. Me out. That would creep me out. That I'd get a, I'd get a knowing. I wanted to know what raising your vibration means. Well, did 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 she say it or did I cut it out of there or is it still coming up? She talks about how she gets chills. She yeah, that was part chill, of the and she'll let it go through to the other person. The sitter will actually get the chills and they're letting them get the get the feeling of the chill that she's receiving so she's able to send this i mean if you can send chills then we can test that that can be that we can make a protocol if you can do something physically if you can send a physical chill to some people and you could set them up so okay you're in you know you're the control group and and i'm sitting here i'm waiting to feel my chills or I'm not waiting to feel my chills with a roll of the die. Feel my chills. <laughs> you would roll the die and you're like, okay, is it chill time or non-chill time? Okay, so I'm rolling the die right. in another room. All right, it's an odd number. It's a it's a it's a five. So all right, this means she's not going to give a chill. So this medium sitting here going, okay, I'm not giving chills to the person in the other room they can't see. And the person in the other room is supposed to say, did they receive a chill at that time or not receive a chill at that time? And then roll the dice again. Okay, so now it's an even number. So if it's an even number now, okay, now she's sending a chill. And you could videotape that from both rooms. I mean, this could all be done if you can do something like that. I, I like that kind of, um, um, I, I've always been fascinated with what can be proved. I mean, she's making a claim. So mm -hmm. that claim can be actual, that's a physical thing that could really be tested. Mm -hmm. If she wants a half a million dollars, I think I know of an organization will be willing to test her. But so I would say none of none of the first reading was evident. She promised us evidence. I want my own money back. <laughs> I want my money back. Oh, okay, here's a question. Tracy walks away from this event and she says, I went to this medium re mediumship reading session summit. And I got a reading from this woman named Lauren. What is she going to say? Do you think she's going to say it was amazing? And my, she, she got my brother. She knew Jerry. was about to be divorced. <laughs> she knew his birthday's in February. She knew Gary. And she knew my dad's name is Gary. Yeah. And she knew that, um, oh, and my. Oh, it was just amazing because she knew about the picture I have up of of, of yeah. Jerry, who is at the shop, who died. He came through and he went and talked about his son, but I was busy and I didn't really want to talk about his son. I wouldn't talk about other people, but he wouldn't talk about his son. And yeah. I guess she would leave the reading believing that those things happened yeah. when, when, and they do that. They'll say, she knew it. She, she got my brother. She said my brother was coming through when actually you're no, you said your brother, you, you claimed it. You said, that's my brother. Yeah. They, they misremember it, even though this is recorded and everybody who attended got a copy of it. I bet you either they don't listen to it or they don't listen to it with any kind of critical 
Why would you? I, I yeah. Why would you go back? I mean, it's, a, it's sort of. I lived through that day. I Let's would. move forward. If you would? People were talking to me. I sure as hell. <laughs> I want to listen to them again. Yeah. I, I don't think I'd be inclined to. I I'd 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 be inclined to just go. Wow, that was a really successful day, and move on. And, and I can maybe even think about getting some money from Barbara. So if maybe I have some <laughs> money coming towards me. So why would I want to go back and look at that critically? It's sort of like, no, I mean, that's to believe that like, that's the presumed competence thing. You know, it's sort of like you're, you're taught Lauren told you at the beginning to believe everything that came through. And if, if, if you don't believe it, just sit with it for a little while and it will come true. So why would she, why would she go away from that thinking she needed to do anything else except believe what happened in the that's a good point. Either believe what happened or believe what she thinks happened in the reading. So there's, no, there's nothing about how she's been primed for this by Lauren to look back at it critically. She's not saying doubt it. She's saying if, if something doesn't sit right, it's either for someone else or it will happen, but you just have to give it some time yeah. and you have to look for the signs. So I think she's going to go back to the salon Oh, I like the point where she says, sometimes you think about quitting. <laughs> no, nobody's ever thought about quitting. Sometimes I, I don't even want to get out of bed in the morning, you know, so like if that's not unusual or <laughs> uncommon or, <laughs> or sporadic even. So she's going to go to, she's going to go back to the salon and she's going to, she's going to tell Barbara when Barbara shows up. Right. That this reading and jerry came through and he wanted me to tell you you're a horrible tipper yeah <laughs> you need to start ponying up <laughs> you do you need to give me some money right now i want some money and i want back pay too right all right, all right let's right. go over there we will be here for 15 hours okay so oh dear my goodness gracious 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 alive hey everybody got pencils and papers ready <laughs> Here we go. Um, the dog's trying to come through. Um, let me see. Oh. Looks down through her notes. Um, give me a second. Yeah, let, let me, me just... go through my notes again. Let me see who should. Hmm. They seem mm. to be on my computer now, so I better go and find somebody else. Um. Hmm. Um. Gosh. Gosh. Now I'm hearing Teresa. Teresa. I don't even see a Teresa though. But I don't see a Teresa. Could be a little. Um, I feel the like the Teresa is more yeah. like sister connection, or. I wonder if they have a dog. Sister, sister, sister here. <laughs> that was um, Teresa's dog. Would anyone understand a Teresa with okay, so as I'm a, go on a mute sister? So I can hear her. Otherwise, I'll just keep talking at the screen, and you'll hear me. No. My sister jo Joni, where are you? Sorry, guys, bear with me. Joni, okay, your sister. And can you unmute, Joni? Just FYI, I have everything blurred, so it's so Hello? Hi, Joni. Hi, I don't know how I do the picture, though. That's okay, I don't have to see you. Oh, okay. Okay, so Teresa would be your sister? In spirit, yes. Yes, and there's quite a few of you, Joni few of us what uh, I'm sorry siblings, siblings wise oh yes yes there was, was like, six of us okay gotcha I really was gonna say seven though so oh, okay um, so I don't know if there was one that had um not or if there was a uh one that was like him but I did see seven so I know that there's it's okay I know that there's a lot of you I know that um that Teresa is is also showing having and struggling in relationships would you understand that Joni? i'm sorry i had to shut the door up could you repeat that do you understand yes. teresa struggling with relationships in her life oh yeah and other things yep mm -hmm. and she shows me this um and, and leaving at a young age within her uh, family right so did she leave uh did she leave the family home at a young age, Joni. Oh, ex oh yeah, exactly. And she yeah. shows me a lot of like um, abuse that she did go through and, and she struggled with here. What, 
like almost like other things that maybe we didn't necessarily talk about or, you know, um, there was a little bit of struggle there within her. She's also bringing me to the month of May and I also see the number 24. So I do feel like the number 24 would be significant in a way. Um, uh, do you know that at all? Um, not the 24th of May. My birthday is on the 8th of May. So yeah, and the 24th feels separate than um, the month of May. Usually the, when they circle it for me, it would be a date though. So it would be the 24th of a month. Do you understand that she passed closer or I'm not even that she passed closer into December or like the holiday. Um, Who passed in December, Joni? Um, no, it wasn't December. Wait, no, I'm getting confused. No, it wasn't December for her. Okay. Um, I do feel like there might be someone else just stepping forward to, um, is there a Frank that would be connected to you? No. No. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Um, I, I do feel like there's a connection to the month of December with the passing. I do feel a gentleman connected to this and it's, it's Frank or Fred, but it's the FR that would be connected. And, um, would there also be a, a spouse or a significant other that has passed Joni? Of hers? Of yours. Um, no. No. Okay. Uh -uh. What I'm seeing is, is, is a gentleman stepping forward and he's showing me this uh, significant other here. So um, if I'm getting it wrong, that it's not yours, would you, would you understand that this would be your, your sister's? Um, significant other? Yeah. yeah. She, I think she had a couple of them. She had some, some wild relationships. <laughs> okay. Okay. I understand. Um, uh, but you don't know of a connection to the name Fred or Frank with either one of those? No, I, it's not coming to me. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, I do know though, that as she steps forward and she's showing me also substance abuse here. Oh yes. And she shows me this being a really long battle here for her. And I felt like at one point in like, I felt like at one point I really had made this effort to do better and to um, make better decisions. But then I went downhill, you know, pretty quickly after that. She made me feel like she tried. It just was a big part of her life here. And she didn't necessarily see that out. Um, she's also bringing me to the West Coast. Are you guys on, um, uh, is there a connection to San Francisco or? I don't know where she used to, she probably traveled quite a bit cause we didn't have a lot of connection, you know, when she was younger she up and took off a lot. And so I'm not sure what that means. Okay. Um, we're, we're from Minnesota. Okay, so let me just share with you what I saw, if it doesn't make sense at how I'm interpreting it. Um, I did see a bridge. I saw like, you know, the a big, big bridge here. So um, I, do, I also do feel that she was homeless at times though. Mm -hmm. um, so just please know that she's stepping forward to let you know, A, that she's okay, that she is free of that, but she is showing me that she is still learning that she is still like her soul is learning. She's growing on the other side, but she wants to thank you for, you know, at you, when you guys were younger, it felt like there was a good relationship there. And then it felt like it got, it, it was hard at times. So it's almost like this, um, she's thanking you for thinking of her. And she says that you do pray to her or you talk to her here and she's thanking you for that. Um, I'm also seeing a, um, like, this bright colored flower here. So hold on, let me see where. Um, and and mom would be passed for you also, Joni? Oh yeah, yeah. And um, was there schizophrenia in the family? You know, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know. My, my daughter's suffering from mental illness too. And I don't know, there's a lot of depression. I know that. And I'm sorry to say it so bluntly in that way. I just have to just share what I'm receiving. No, that's, that's fine. I, I, I love the truth. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do know that mom's stepping forward with your sister and that they are showing me that sign for like mental illness. It does feel like this isn't diagnosed, um, in the family. Um, and I don't, um, and I, ah, okay. This is interesting. Cause they're bringing me back to December. Um, and I know we're in a group setting. Um, but would you understand, uh, a big incident that happened in December. Um, and I'm not necessarily saying this uh, might be this last December, but there's a big incident that would have happened here um, as far as like a mental health incident. Um, is that relating to like me and my daughter now? I'm not quite sure what they're showing. Oh. They're just trying to references and I promise I will share that with you if I receive you know who it's necessarily about but it's this connection to December felt like there was like a mental health spout your daughter did move back in with you though uh she she's back out again okay but it was like this moving in and out sort of thing so yeah yeah she was she was with me for a while and there was a lot of bad stuff that went on between us so this is one of the reasons I feel that your sister who struggled um, with substance abuse and, and mental health, that she's coming forward just to let you know that she is helping your daughter in the way that we can't necessarily hear. And I do know that mom as well. So, um, and who is big on dancing here? Me? Are you a big dancer? <laughs> I enjoy dancing. I love music and I just can never find a dancing partner. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just yeah. dance on your own then because I mean, that's be- like, that's so beautiful. I literally feel like this is that place of meditation for you. Again, that place of clearing your own thoughts and really connecting in here. So just know that mom's there with you at that time when you are doing that. And I feel like, she, you know, she didn't have a lot of time or she didn't you know, do a lot of things that she loved here, right? It always felt like she didn't make the time to do those things, but that she's applauding you for doing that yourself. Um, Are you talking about my sister or my mother right now? Your mom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, and the MAR that would be connected. Are we talking Mary? Um, it could be Mary or Margaret or Marie. Yeah. Well, I have an aunt named Margaret and I have a sister that's passed. That's Mary. Okay. Um, let me just see. Well, who would have the long hair that you remember? The long hair. Mm, Can't think of anybody with, no, that's one of them. One of them. Well, Teresa would probably be the one with the chemical abuse situation, addiction, whatever. Uh, but I saw long hair randomly. So usually it's like that little breadcrumb that they're offering to us to help us better understand. Um, okay. Um, let me just ask, cause I want to try to get to other people as well. Um, let me just ask if there's any guidance, um, that they can give around your daughter. And I did see a little white dog. So I do have to share that. Um, let me just see, they keep pointing to the, the clock and they're showing me time here. So I feel that, um, I see you doing everything possible here for your daughter that you could possibly do. Right. Mm -hmm. What I saw was that it's kind of out of your hands, but it is, you know, the, the separation is something that is is going to kind of heal or bring a little bit of healing to your relationship with her, even though this has been really difficult, it almost felt like there was a lot of, uh, whether it's verbal or physical, there was a little bit of an abusive tendency as well. It was both. Yes. Pretty bad. The police were called and it was got ugly. Yeah. And again, I'm sorry, I know we're in a group setting, but I did. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I, I did see jail or, um, was- you know, that's you're right on You're spot on. Yeah. Uh, I was concerned about her the last time. And, uh, so when the, the officer made a, a report here, 
I thought she was drinking or something. I didn't know. And then so they went and found her and arrested her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so look, that's not something that I know. That's something that they know. And they're just trying to let you know, you know, your mother and your sister are trying to let you know that they are helping and guiding her again in a way that it is out of our hands here in the physical world. I also did see hummingbirds. So I just want you to pay attention oh, to that. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. Could I just ask you one question about my son? Sure. Oh, is he ever going to come back into my life? With my grandsons. Um, and I saw three and two. So are there are two there grandsons? Two, are there two boys that he has? Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, so I do, I, I feel like um, there's a lot of anger actually on, yep. on his end of things. And um, I do feel that, um, I feel like it's something, again, he kind of has to, work through. So your soul signed up for some <laughs> tough stuff here because um, it feels like they, a lot of this stuff is out of your hands, but some of it's being, actually a lot of it's being placed on you here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so will he come back into your life? You know, I don't know that. Um, I, I do feel around that situation. I feel like this is kind of, you guys were very close for a period of time here, right? But that um, I feel, and is there a Florida connection, Joni? Not that or I'm aware. No. No, okay. Do you know where your son is right now? I'm guessing. Okay. Um, I do feel like there's an opportunity and they're actually connecting you to the grandchildren as well. So it felt like there was an opportunity, especially around that, you know, so, so hang in there and allow again, that time aspect, because it feels like that connection may happen, um, especially through your grandchildren. Like it, it's going to be healing once you do have that ability to reconnect with them. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not receiving as much about that, but um, talk to, keep talking to your family and your people on their side because they're going to help you through this. Absolutely. So thank you, Joni. Thank you for thank allowing me to connect. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bless you. You're wonderful. All right, let me just, thank you. That poor woman. Oh. That was horrible. That was horrid. That was so awful. People in the comments were like, what in the world? This is <laughs> terrible. They said this is somebody said this is excruciating or, or this is just, just awful to watch. This is just. Yeah, boy, no wonder this Lauren person is is not done any other videos or done any other events or something if this is a quality of her mediumship this is crap yeah and the woman who just hung up is like oh you're amazing well what is she gonna say you know she got a few she, she got some attention from somebody at the conference That's true. You nobody know. else seems to want to give her any attention <laughs> her son is not speaking to her her grandchildren are not speaking to her her oh. sister ran off and who knows where she is her, her daughter is not hanging out with her anymore she's been arrested in a jail and she can't find a dancing partner and gosh this is a country song already right there i felt really bad for that sitter yeah yeah about for her there's something else going on there because why would the the son's angry at her and has left what could that be could it be could it be uh political maybe they have political differences and she and maybe QAnon related or whatever something no. in there. The whole family drop podcast. Boy, that's a good podcast. So there's a lot of estrangement during. Remember this happening during the pandemic. Yeah, there could be political. You know, maybe maybe he doesn't want to speak to his mother anymore because he's angry at her voting. I don't know. My my psychic recommendation would be you your whole family needs to go to a count like a licensed counselor and get some of this sorted out if you can individually or family doesn't matter but you all kind of need some help 
end end of reading but Somebody, um Kat, Kat mentioned that she sounds like an enabler Joni an, an enabler oh enabler She's yeah been enabling people for so long yeah that yeah yeah, I don't know. Some people's lives are just go through periods or they live their whole life in chaos. And I, it's just like this was way deeper than the psychic should have even been dealing with. Yeah, but yeah psychics. This woman has no business going to psychics. Daniel says codependent. Yeah. 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 yeah this psychic has no business whatsoever giving any kind of advice. That was not advice, that was not helpful. That was just like, oh, pay attention to the other people in your life. And then, I mean, yeah. at least she could have told her, go to the dance classes. You will meet a nice man. No, because the woman's probably a horrible picker of people. She doesn't have any business hanging out with I'm them. guessing, yeah, yeah. Somebody's just going to come home with her and it's not going to be any better. Okay, so let's start. Um, so, good notes, because I only heard half of this when I today. And I didn't... Okay. Uh, maybe the first few minutes so this is all new to me there were a lot of no's in this one you know uh, like most of them. <laughs> yeah yeah was it 24. a december holiday no okay she like, said the first of all she throws out december as a like some sort of um uh a month where there was a struggle or something i'm thinking yeah every christmas holiday there's at least a little drama you know yeah, just to make things interesting health. That's a several, I think Kat was talking about it, that if you have mental illness, if you've got a dysfunctional family, December, Christmas time is always a horrible time. Terrible, terrible. So many uh, expectations and just terrible. Mother's Father's Day, whenever, if you're, if you're, if your problem is your mother, or your father. Oh, the hummingbird. Okay. Yeah. Wait, I'm going to get to that. Okay. Oh. Let's see. So she says if they circle the date, if they circle the yeah. date, yes. then that means it's a calendar. I'm thinking, so you're the medium and you see what, like a number being written, like, you know, like animation. And then you see a hand come up and it circles it. I mean, is that what they're saying they're seeing? They're seeing like an animation, just a circle appears or a hand reaches. I just find that really odd that they can describe this physical thing that they see physical yeah. i mean they're seeing it especially right. if the she in the other one she said that the spirit was a was light or energy or something oh, so yeah. how does so how does that how do you get from that to a circled number <laughs> you're asking me I don't know. yes i want to know uh it me it happens when it happens and when it doesn't happen it doesn't happen and mm. that's what it means mm. when it's when it's independent when it's evidence <laughs> right when it's evidence and it works and if it's not working it's not evidence but then it's there but you just have to for, yeah whatever i see a dog i see a dog, <laughs> a dog yeah right white, little white dog here somewhere which the sitter didn't, you know, even respond to. Yeah, Kitty she's like, says, she sees a bridge, and then she's like, oh, see, "Is it San Francisco?" And the person's like, mm, "I don't know, maybe the oh, person." Oh, we never left like Minnesota here. I'm yeah, just, and then she I'm said, doing... "You sure you didn't see a big, big bridge and like a really homeless, big bridge. I, you know, like somebody, a homeless person living underneath the bridge?" I think that's what she was fishing <laughs> for, maybe. Pat says that reading felt really predatory. And Kenny says they can describe dates, months, circles, and hummingbirds, but not the right name. Right. It was an FR name, Frank or Fred. And the, the person was like, no. Or or FR. Right. So it, that could have been somebody's last name, first name, middle name, nickname. Yeah. Kind of why is it always name? first names? Why, why, why isn't does it ever is it ever last name somebody says you know my last name was no i've never seen a reading that got a last name unless it was not even thomas john when he's looking right at the last name. <laughs> i don't think i've ever seen him give it is um, there is there a rule that has to be a first name when you say it? it's an f it's in the rules it's in, the, it's in, in the, those rules we haven't seen <laughs> there should be a there should be a book of rules like you should, as we go through these we should write down all the rules that these people we can are. teach these classes janice i could pay off my house that would be amazing we'll just oh my gosh that that would be so amazing we could just write the book of rules 
and we'll certify these mediums. Of course, none will yes. pass. <laughs> we'll just say, you, know, yeah, you didn't pass and you didn't pass. If you know X number of the rules, if you know 10 out of the 12 rules that... Um, uh, Daniel says the last name he sees, he says the best last name is Smith. <laughs> I, mean, I see and an S, says, S, S last name. FR means fraudulent readings. Yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, did your husband die? No. <laughs> she no. was confused, poor lady. I don't blame her because half of the time she's like, are you talking about my mom or my right. son now or my or my daughter? And didn't right. she make it kind of sound like her daughter was in was I kind of got the feeling the the medium thought the daughter had died. No, the daughter's Boy, there's uh, the daughter was in jail. Yeah, it was confusing. I was confused. Uh, you what know are that. You talking about now. <laughs> the poor sitter is like, you mean my daughter and me, or my? Who are you talking about? Daughter? Like, what are you talking about? Teresa's significant other, and she's like, I have no idea. I mean, that's the thing. So this this woman Joni is going to leave saying, oh, she knew all about my sister Teresa, but I couldn't. I couldn't substantiate it. I couldn't, I couldn't acknowledge it as evidence because I don't know anything about my sister. Isn't the sister Teresa coming through offering evidence? So Suppose. why is she talking about her history of wandering around San Francisco or whatever, when she could give specific things like maybe the address of the house they, they were raised in? Right. She right. could have said, we had a dog named Toto and he was a white Spanish terrier and you named him because you were watching the Wizard of Oz at the time. And our house was on Fifth, Fifth and, and Vine. And we, in the house number was this. And our phone number was this growing up. I mean, that's evidence. Why would you give evidence to somebody that you know that she doesn't know? Right. Right. I think this sitter is kind of feisty, though, too, because because uh, she says at the beginning, there's a sister connection. And then. Um, she said something about siblings and said there's quite a few of you and the, yeah. the um the sitter says Joni says six and and the and Lauren says I was gonna say seven well you know what's interesting about that is mediums do that all the time is if they get the number wrong on a sibling count or you know your mom had x amount of kids it's always oh they they guess higher they always guess higher because what happens is they say, oh, there must have been a miscarriage or, uh, oh, my mom never mentioned a miscarriage. Well, I know. <laughs> or she had a miscarriage and she didn't know she had a miscarriage. That's Because women, that, that happens. People skip a pregnancy, yeah, skip yeah. a period and they don't realize that they had had a uh, miscarriage and they didn't even know they were pregnant. Especially right. lots of people who have irregular periods. They don't know. So, um yeah so yeah. kat said she brought up mar m-a-r i like how she just wrote yes. the word, three letters like that could yeah. have uh, been march it could have been a place it could have been a marsh it could have been right. and then she says oh there's an aunt mary and a Mar I mean, aunt margaret and a sister mary i think kat's taking notes she's a good student and um, Mary, but nothing else was said unless I just got really confused. Yeah, Kat's saying, I'm confused too, Kat, because that was, well, you saw no, so she, she connected to the name, to the three letters M-A-R. Yeah. She said, are we talking about Mary or Margaret or like, and then, she said, then, then to clarify, Lauren said long hair, the person with long hair and, and the, and the oh, sitter's no. like, no. I don't Neither know. one of them had long hair. How could there not be somebody in your family with long hair? That would have been. Well, she said Teresa. That. She went back to Teresa. But then she has she was... Teresa for. Or she, is she sure she's <laughs> dead? Is she sure she, Teresa's dead? Oh, uh, I don't know. How... Teresa might be calling her on the phone and come back in her life. In her spirit. Life. Teresa in spirit. Well, if she's out running around all over the place with lots of significant others living under bridges or something homeless at times west coast the woman has never been in the west coast obviously she's saying we're from minnesota and she says it like that well we're from we're in minnesota like as if no we can't leave we're, we're in minnesota we can't, we can't leave. Leave. this is it this is as far as we go nobody's ever been out of minnesota we, we don't go across the borders there's no. a world outside of minnesota <laughs> I don't know how to turn on my camera on Zoom. I shouldn't be making. Oh, that's how I feel like about Maine lately. Last since you know, last couple of years, I've been stuck in Maine. 
I'm not bad. I mean, you know, I'm not complaining. Stuck, I guess. I'm not it's complaining. Not, well, West Coast is pretty damn big. So if the if she said West Coast first, and then she says San Francisco, San Francisco, and I'm thinking, okay, that's a big area. But if she had said no, not San Francisco, but L.A. or Seattle. Right. Or Portland. That's all West Coast. Those are all big cities. So then then it would be a hit. But all she said was West Coast. I see Florida. Do you know where your son is? That's right. <laughs> she be laughing. She, be uh, laughing. she didn't say that. She said, I see Florida. Is there any connection with Florida? Because people in Minnesota go to Florida because it's like warm there and there's no snow right so that's right. a normal thing so so that's yeah like a, they do that in maine too they call cold. them snowbirds yeah they call them snowbirds we don't have that problem <laughs> nobody yeah. goes to florida from california no and if you don't like winter you don't want to be in minnesota or maine probably no, for the i think winter. it's beautiful but it's, it's 10 p.m do you know where your children are cat says but you know the the thing is she says my son is estranged from me with his kids because of an argument or or anger or something like that and she mm-hmm. says do you not know where your son is and somebody else mentioned this in the chat they're like why don't you just tell her where her her son is just right. just say it lauren you you're you're the medium can't you just say can't you connect to him and say you know he is angry at you but i think if you were to say you know help her out if you were to say mom i'm really sorry i mean son who she never mentions or the grandkids names nobody's names are mentioned like that right she could have said you know the issue is is that you didn't get vaccinated and your and your son is like a doctor and he doesn't want you he's upset he, that you wouldn't get vaccinated and he doesn't want to have any connection with you because of that so if you were to go and say i'm sorry i've got more information now i am now vaccinated and boosted and all that please let me see my grandkids he would have said okay mom I mean, that would be advice. Yes. Yep. Right? Yep. yep. Not, well, I don't know where your son is. Do you know where your son is? Yeah, maybe. Well, at least, she, at least she did say, when she said, am I going to see my son again? She did say, I don't know. That's probably the only truthful thing in the whole reading. It was like, she because she doesn't know. Something about a colorful flower comes up and then that that's gone. Yeah uh oh this poor Teresa person who's dead who's had this horrible life is still learning (laughs) right okay she must be she must be like um in with Kelly Eckhart's crowd because didn't didn't she think that people when you pass you still learn you learn you review your life you continue learning and then you get to pick how your next you plan your next life that's how it goes in Kelly's world. Kelly's world. Um, so maybe they've hooked up or something. Well, she did watch her reading. Kelly was before this one. This yeah. is later in the same reading. Kat says, um, I see three and two. And then the sitter confirmed there were two grandsons. But what was the three? When she said, I see three and two, I thought she was giving the ages of the grandchildren. Uh, oh, but nothing was specifically said. It was interpreted. That's the thing. It was so generic that it's interpreted depending on who is listening. And if if it had hit, it would have hit. Or maybe the last time I saw them, they were three and two. And now they're 15 and, you know, 14. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kenny, I thought this was a hot mess. I didn't, I, oh, it wasn't it was, hot reading. It was just a hot mess. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kenny says, do you know which of your relatives are deceased? Did you list them for me by first name only? Yeah. Um, okay, some of the other things. Oh, this is this is great. And I am looking for this. I never know what to name these videos I'm doing. So if people want to, by the time we're done, have something they want me to name this video. But um, the one I really like the best is the sitter says, she's like, oh, I hate to say this kind of stuff because it's really personal and so on. And the sitter says, I love the truth. I, I laughed. I, I thought really? I'm, you may have heard me laugh when I when they came. I did. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean yeah, to. It was it funny. Came out. It was. I try to be respectful, but oh, big incident in December. Some mental health issue. Yeah, she said. She said something about moving. Your did your daughter move back in? 
It was really bad stuff. And then who dances? Who loves to dance? She says, me. She says, well, you should, but I have no way to dance with. But it didn't say she's not married because she asked her earlier, Does, are you, is your husband dead? And she's, no. Like as if she hasn't checked on him in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go downstairs and look and see if he's sitting. He, sit, he was watching the game earlier. Maybe he's, maybe, I don't know. Let me go check. He was sleeping in. <laughs> I didn't have anybody to dance with. She's um, Margaret, Mary, or Marie. M-A-R. It could yeah. be Margaret, Mary, or Marie. Like three of the most common names. Oh, right. she did say, is your mom alive? Now you can hear in the woman's voice. This woman is older. She's in her 70s or later. You can just hear it. So what's the likelihood her mother would be alive if she was 70? Right. Not likely. Um, oh, and she says breadcrumb. They're leaving me <laughs> breadcrumbs. And I thought she needed to leave a few more. Before. She needed to leave a lot more breadcrumbs for this one to make sense. Oh, these people are cracking me up. So so Daniel said about the guy who was might be dead, her husband, he says, put a mirror under his nose. <laughs> That's not nice. That's not nice, Daniel. Okay. Jail. Yeah. Spot on with that. Well, yeah. Well, right. Yeah. After she after she revealed she called the police on her daughter. Oh, yeah. It was after that, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. But what about the little white dog? <laughs> Get brought up again. And she's pointing to a clock. And I'm thinking, yeah, me too. I'm thinking the same thing. When is this going to be over? <laughs> I'm pointing to a clock in my head saying, what? Oh, she was such this a one was just like very motivated to find. Oh. Yeah, uh, this one was confusing to me. I was just Daniel so... said that uh, his Sherlocky skills yes. tells her that tells him that she smokes a lot. I don't know. I didn't catch that. Did you? Oh, uh, did you think she was a smoker? The the sitter. Yeah, I didn't notice. No, I'm not sure. She sounded old. Not like she did have kind of a raspy. If but... she was a if she was a smoker, she would have been coughing. <laughs> Everyone's coughing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have so rarely seen anybody smoke anymore that if you somebody smoke, oh really you should come and, here oh, no. you should come to Maine. No, California is just like I think they're almost all gone. Or if they're anywhere, they're if you, you see one, you go what that person yeah. in that car over there is smoking. Well, wow. Yeah, no. down east smoke. down east Maine they they still it How depends on where you are in Maine. Oh, hummingbirds. The woman Joni almost started to cry. I know. That I wonder if she so painful. Was there a hummingbird somewhere in in the where the Lauren could see, like in the background or something? No, her video was shut off. Joni's oh, video is right. shut off. She couldn't figure out how to turn it on. Right. There, there are. Um, I was going to mention that there, there are lots of cultures that attach certain meanings to to different animals and birds yeah. and things. So I wonder if they maybe one of the sessions or they had been familiar. You know, like they were talking about like a hummingbird means such and such. And I'm sure if we looked it up in the book of rules, we would know. Cardinals mean something too. You know what? I just had a thought, Janice. Okay. Did you see it up here over my head? I did. I saw light go. Yeah, it was a light. <laughs> I just had a thought. Joni could not figure out how to turn her screen on. Which tells me, this is 2021. That up until this point, which was September 2021, she hasn't been Zooming. She has not had a Zoom. Uh, like, you know, we we Zoom. We know how to do that because we learned how to do that because we are having a lot of conversations with people on the Internet. So I'm thinking Joni is probably even more isolated than we think. She's in Minnesota. During a pandemic, her, her son won't speak to her. Her daughter's in jail or gone somewhere. Her sister's dead. We don't know about the other siblings, but she isn't even probably Zooming with people on the internet because if she had done that, like with her other siblings or her other grandchildren or her other somebody in her life, somebody would have explained how to have turned on that the video part. Yeah. And since she hasn't figured that out, it's probably showing she's even more isolated than than we would think yeah 
Yeah, that, this one made me sad. Said. This one definitely made me sad. Cat says she's writing the rules down. I went in on that cat. If you publish, <laughs> yeah, no. cat. go for it. Her I think you sons, make a book of rules. She figured out that her grandson, that her, he, there was two sons and there's something about a connection with Florida, but we don't know what that is. And the best this Lauren can tell her is hang in there. Yeah, Maybe we should call it hang in there. I, I love the truth. Hang in there. That's maybe what the name of this video is. I, <laughs> this was awful. I know. That poor it, woman. Yeah, no, it wasn't good. It wasn't it's good. Sad. sad as heck. Connect with grandchildren. We get everything? Everybody's got it covered? Yep. Yeah. I like uh, Lauren's out was, I'm sorry, I'm not receiving, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Talk I'm to not, your family. I'm oh, not talk to your family. I had the feeling that Lauren wanted out of this. Do you, I, I get the feeling that Lauren doesn't think she's doing well. Oh, yeah? You think she thinks she's doing well? I don't know. I think she, I think she's very inexperienced. And this is 2021. So she's, this is her first big event. That was awful. Okay, we have one more to go. Everybody there? It is, it says we have 15 minutes. And that last bit might be just uh Thomas John coming in and saying, great job. <laughs> or something. I don't know. No, I think it, I think no. I, I think it's very milk, sure. I've got a few more milk duds left. So I had a popsicle while the thing was going. <laughs> a popsicle. No, I can't do it. Oof. Okay, so if everybody's sitting down and ready, okay, so she's gonna. Here we go. Off to my sound. Go. Um. I don't know, Joni, can you mute yourself? I, I don't think I oh, have. Sure. Okay. I have to find that again. Thanks, Joni. Um, okay. And I do keep hearing the name Michael, 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 Michael. Hold on one second here. Susan, that would be with you? Yes. Okay. And is there a younger male that would have passed? That's Michael. Okay, perfect. Hold on, let me try to get you up here so I can see you. Um, he's talking about today being very significant or right around now being very significant time. Yeah. And is this a, a hold on one second, let me just ask. Is there an anniversary coming up? And then- It was just my wedding anniversary. Oh, gotcha, okay. And um, there would be, um, Gosh, and I keep hearing that Frank, a Frankie again too. So, well, it could be because when you were saying that, my husband died on Christmas Day. Ah, that's what it is. And um, so, please and know he had, that a brother, he had a brother Frank. So perfect. That's what it is. So please just try to you know know that that was also for you. And so that's a really good point for everybody in this um, group that that was also a message for you. Um, I, and so your husband passed on Christmas day. Yes. But it, where's the motorcycle connection? There, I, there is no motorcycle collect, connection. Okay. I... That's fine. Please, please just be honest. That's perfect. Um, yeah. with, when I see a motorcycle, it's either a literally motorcycle or there would be a connection to like fast driving or unsafe driving in some way here. I feel like it's more so they're trying to refer to someone here in the physical world. Are we? I, I don't understand, but um, is there someone that you know that's driving unsafely or driving fast here? No. no. Okay. Fair. Um, and um, let me just say this so you have it. I did see someone <laughs> driving very. Uh, my son's saying because he had a fast passing. 
no, 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 okay. it, that wouldn't be it. And, and now I'll feel completely differently, but thank you for saying that. There is something about that. Someone driving unsafely, and I kept seeing that there would be a connection to him in that car with them um, at that time, like kind of keeping this person safe. So just remember that, nothing scary in any way. Um, I do know that what he shows me though, is that there are some pieces to the puzzle that don't quite make sense for his passing here. Do you understand right. that? He's showing me a lot of questions. He's making me feel like we had to go to, that we're even going to people in charge and they don't even have the answers whatsoever here. So, but I kept seeing you going around, not just the person that was designated to you to help you. It felt like you even went to other people that weren't yep. the main person that was uh, uh, connected to his passing here. He's also yes. showing me he was with another gentleman at that time. Yes. Yeah. And he's showing me that there would be a connection to, okay, oh, so I know your husband passed in December, but then there would also be a January passing. Yes. That's not with your son. No. Okay. Um, so I just know that they're trying to acknowledge this other person. I mean, you have a lot of people, you have a lot of people connect to you, a lot of people with you. Your son was cremated. Yes. Because he's talking about the necklace also, or who has the, the necklace or the piece of him or thinking about doing that. Uh, yeah, there is someone who's thinking of that. Um, doesn't mean that they need to do that, but I know that he's offering that. He's also talking about these books or these time slot, or, or it's these writings that we're going back to that are kind of helping us pinpoint the time period. What not there something off about the timing of his passing? Yes. And it's like, there's something missing here is what he said, yeah. something missing. So he's looking, he showed me a book and there's all these, these time slots and these timing, like, like these events and, and there's something big and major missing here is what he's saying. But yes. he's saying because of how tragic, you know, his passing was, but there has been a lot of focus there on that. Right. Yeah. And he's like, but that's not what I want for you in your life here. Like, I don't want you to use this time up here trying to find those answers or that justice because I don't feel, I don't feel that we may, I don't feel like we're going to get all the answers that maybe we're looking for here. And I feel like you've gathered some, but he's making, and he's tried to help you give you some, but he's saying like, this is not what I want for you and the rest of your life here. He says, I want you to be happy and to find joy in the same way. And it felt like you have been very resilient in your life here. But then when he passed, you were like, no more, I give up. Like almost like there's so many other passings that you've gone through and so many other things. But after he passes a day that feels like you die, right? Or that you are like, I, I'm not doing this anymore. But he right. said, I need you to live here wonderfully for me in the resilient way that you always showed me that I live. And he says people are, he's being blamed for his passing though. Why do I see the finger? So what, usually when I see the finger is that, is that there's actually someone else that would be connected to the passing. Yes. But what he's showing me with this is that there was someone else or, or that someone is pin, pinning it on him actually. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. He's also, gosh, I need to go back to that necklace. I don't think that was what he was trying to say. Cause he showed me fingerprint, 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 fingerprint. Is there a fingerprint that you'd have of his? Not that I know of. Okay. There's something he's trying to show me and I swear it's with a necklace. And, and usually that would be that sign for cream in the necklace for me, but it's something else. I feel like there's a gift that he gave to you through someone else. Thanks. And I swear it was something like that. It's a necklace. It him. It was a piece of him. And he's saying he got it to oh. you from someone else. It was a necklace. Right there. It was a necklace. Huh. Yes. That, that his best friend gave me right after my son passed. His best friend gave me a necklace that... Okay was for Mother's Day, so it was, for, but he, but his friend said it was from Michael. Oh my gosh, perfect. So he's just validating that for me, who would know nothing about you or him. He's just trying to let you know that that 
was absolutely from him, from his friend. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. And, and, and you knew that already, but it's just nice to have that validation, I'm sure. And he says that he, you actually hear him. So I know that sometimes yeah. you kind of struggle with connecting with him yourself and you question that, like we talked about, but he says that you hear him, you yeah. heard him. Yes. That's his, that's him. And, and know that that's how he's connecting with you. He says, you've also seen him. So I saw you do the, the double take, right. And that you've seen someone there. He's letting yeah. you know that he's there, but also with dad and him and his father would kind of struggled with their relationship a little bit. Cause he just shows a little like, the, like with that struggle, there's been healing that's happened on the other side here. Okay. Good. And he shows that he wants to thank you both here it feels like you guys are very much healing partners for each other and that you've helped each other through a lot of this and did you move in or did you move in at some time did you guys live together late after his passing no um i i moved closer to be by her perfect because he's having he's showing me the move and he's showing you guys together here so know that he's thanking you guys for like actually listening to him because he made me feel like that was that was a push that he gave you saying like this needs to happen right now and he's also talking about the 11th okay hold on the 11th um are you seeing the 11 11s or um I, i'm looking right at you because he's showing me the 11 <laughs> but then it's not just 1 11 it's 11 11 11 11 11 so he's really trying to get this to you to let you know that you're right on track here and you've been questioning that a lot yourself whether or not you're making the right decisions and he just needs you to know that he loves you very much but that you are exactly where you need to be and he thanks you for that here he's also saying it's okay to take a little more time for yourself it feels like we've been busy and and consumed with everything else around us but that like almost like you need a little minute for yourself in a way but that his soul will be there with you and he is do you have his shoes? You have his shoes? Yeah. <laughs> and um and you made a blanket. Oh, I did see the blanket as well. So is there a blanket that would be and I'm sorry to kind of move forward like that, but um oh I'm sorry, this is with your mother. You have your mother's blanket? I have I have a blanket that my mother made for him. Perfect. So know that that is their way of trying to let you know that they are together, always together here. And also, and I do see, I do see feathers though too. So, um, I'm, I'm literally seeing a white feather and I want you to remember this again, it's, it's, it's not gonna be where your down comforter is, but I want you to know, just remember this as silly as that may sound. He's also bringing me to like outdoors, the connection to like outdoors or, hiking or movement outside and i feel actually this is the way that we connect with him as well so just pay attention to that you're like how you're feeling as you're doing that because he's saying he's with you as you're there and he's also talking i know you said you moved but he's talking about another move here so are you considering moving i am yes perfect um and he wants you to do it. Like, it feels exciting here. It feels positive. It feels like I'm celebrating the move and it's, and it's a beautiful thing. So, um, and um, would there be the, the James that is connected also? James? Um, no. Um, it has to be Jim or James. Jason. Yeah. Could it be Jason? Yeah. Uh, um, my brother in law's middle name is James. So that's probably mm -hmm. obscure. Oh, okay. Um, that's okay if you don't know that. Um, okay. Um, one more thing here. He wants to say who who's wearing his his sweatshirt or his jacket? Do we have his sweatshirt still? Uh huh. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like it's just something we keep away. I feel like we hold it or there's I'm that. wearing one of the shirts right now. Ah, ah, okay, gotcha. I'm sorry. So that would be what you're doing right now. Got it. Um, so please know that he knows that, that he's a- and I have his coat and I smell it all the time. 
Perfect. Exactly. Um, he's also talking about was it, his passing very close to another birthday. Yes, yes his his birthday. And um, but Jason is Jason the friend. Yes. Okay, Jason's the friend. And he's also talking about a voicemail here. Do you have a message from him still that we've kept? Yes. And um, he, you have a, you have a home line still? No. Okay. I saw like one of those older phones and. I have one that's sitting next to my bed, but it's not plugged in. Okay. Gotcha. But what he's showing me with this is something different than just having it. He's showing that, um, hold on, I'm getting a couple things. He's showing that you would have received like these funny calls. Uh, I don't know what that means. There's something he's messing with the phone. Okay, um, well, I keep getting phone calls and it on my cell phone and it just says unknown and then there's nothing and no one there and it could be that because I, so, I don't know what it is. So be a healthy skeptic about it, right? We all get like telemarketers like that, right? On our yeah, phone. So be healthy. Say, it just says unknown. Exactly. So I know he's bringing it up for a reason, but ask him and say, look, if this is you and you're trying to get my attention, show me one more time here, you know, and allow him to validate that for you. But he is showing me like messing with the phone in these phone calls. Okay. One more okay. thing. And he's, I'm also seeing a red ring or a ruby. Ruby. So it has to be a red ring. Do you have one of those? I know that's kind of an odd thing. No. Um, okay. Oh, I just lost you here. Um, I saw a red ring and I feel like this is connected. Is there Charlotte? This might no. be moving forward. Okay. Can I just ask, and I know I'm over my time. Does anyone have a Charlotte that would be connected with the red ring? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you. No. Okay. So I'm, I just have to share that because I did see that and hear that name. Um, but Tracy, I know I'm over my, my time here. No, thank you. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Lauren. And when I send out the recording, um, do you want to tell everybody your website and how to get in touch with you? Oh, sure. Um, so my website is just my name. So it's Lauren Start, L-A-U-R-E-N-S-T-A-R-T-T dot com. So um, thank you, Tracy. And thank you to Thomas for having me. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Be a healthy skeptic. I hurt. I hadn't watched any of that before. Eh. Now we've seen this couple before that was on the screen. Were you, was it with Kelly or was it when I was doing another reading and I put up? I don't. Mm. Oh, this was with, this is with the first reading of the day. It was the psychic. Her name is, let me look real quick. Her name is. Suarez, Lillian, Lillian Suarez. Okay, so I've already put up a video, short videos, because Lillian Suarez was the first reader of the day, first medium of the day, and she was atrocious. Boy, they don't get much better, do they? But um, what Lillian did is, um, like I said, it's the first reading of the day. So this person, who is this, Lauren? She could have watched it to get any of those hits right, but I'm not sure she watched it. One of the things that the first medium uh, Lillian did is she was like, does your husband still see, do you still wear your husband's, your wedding ring? And she's like, yes. And she's crying and you could see her ring on her hand. I mean, if I hadn't blurred it, you could see her ring as she's moving her hand, you could see it. Also, we all know if we watch the first reading that they're really into Elvis. I mean, her and her husband were really into Elvis and all this other stuff. We'd heard a lot of this information about, I think about her son. Um, some other things had already been come forward in the first reading that was so awful. So um, I don't think she watched it because this is such, 
awful reading that I think that, I don't know. So those two women on the couch, uh, we learned in the first reading uh, that Lillian said, is that your sister sitting there next to you? And they look at each other and they go, oh, she's like a sister. Mm-hmm. So, and if I hadn't blurred it, you would see that the other woman is much younger, like 30 years younger than the, than the sitter. And the sitter's name is Suzanne, right? That is that her name? Susan. Yeah, I think it was Susan. Yeah. Suzanne is what I think it says on the screen. If I remember correctly, let me write that down. S-U-Z-A-N-N-E. I think that's what it said on the screen. Oh, and, okay. Um, Cause I think she said Susan. Very likely people do that. So the, um, the woman on the, so what we learned in the first reading with, with Lillian is that this woman is, she jumped in often, you know, there was a lot of things happening and she was connected to her mom and her dad because, well, you know, she's in her late seventies. And so of course her mom and dad came through, but she's willing to believe pretty much anything and make anything make sense. we learned that almost anything that Lillian said, this woman would seize on is correct. So I'm not shocked if anything in the, this um, came through. She said that she lived, she moved to be near her friend that was sitting on the couch, right? Is that what you yeah. got? Yeah. And now the friend is thinking of moving again? Yeah. And she's probably like, I'm done with this person <laughs> who's maybe sit here for four hours to watch mediumship readings and don't come back to my house. Don't come back. Okay, so I missed the first minute or so. Um, what did I miss? How many hits did she get the first? She minute? had she had the anniversary. That Frankie the anniversary of the son's death or whose death? She's. I heard. I came in. Michael. My she son. Said, my but it was her. It was her wedding. It was her wedding in the. Um. Lauren said, I feel like there's a, like a, something, a, something significant, significant date or whatever, however she said it. And she said, is it an anniversary? And Suzanne said, yes, it was her wedding anniversary recently. And that Frankie had died on Christmas day. That's her husband. Brother. Oh, I Christmas. remember. I remember from the chat, they were talking about some of the things that came through in the reading before with Joni was yes. showing up in this reading and this medium was saying oh that other thing that didn't hit with Joni is hitting with Suzanne and that's her their way of showing you they're coming through or whatever like so that's what she meant by Christmas well day. she said don't feel bad this this meant something to you this had something to do with you the other sitter too but it's you know it works for both people no it doesn't yeah. what the hell are you talking about i know especially because the other one said no to to fr or frank or whatever she said no so it didn't oh there, there was a motorcycle cl- connection she yeah, says no and then literally uh, somebody f- driving fast or unsafe driving and the person was supposedly in the car with them and she's like no and she's like don't worry it was it's you know maybe that's scary that i'm not having yeah. I'm not doing right now. Yeah. how did I don't do know. Know I mean, her son die do we know say that again do we know how her son died did that ever come out was he somebody was at fault partly he was at fault but partly he was not at fault he was pointing his finger at other people, but then oh yes, else, right, right. Somebody else thinks I was responsible in some way. Like which mean? finger? Which <laughs> finger was he? <laughs> I think she's showing me a finger, and I'm he's showing me a finger, and I'm thinking, well, that's that's rude. Yeah, he's being blamed for his passing. Someone, someone is is connected. Someone else is connected to the passing. Which I thought, well, if you didn't go to the doctor soon enough when you were feeling sick and then they you got in and you found out that you had you know if you'd come in sooner you would have gotten it is that being blamed for not the woman let go her her son's name is michael so i'm really curious i haven't watched the rest of the videos yet the one thomas john's gonna do i'm really curious if thomas john's gonna at the very end of this uh summit is gonna pull up a michael for her 
I'm just calling it right now, you guys. Well, and I, I thought it was interesting that the, at one point when she's talking about um, uh, the father's son struggle and healing or something. Oh, no, it was a necklace. And she said, she said something like, oh, thank you for validating from that. I, mean, I didn't know any, I didn't know you, you know, but I came up with this information, you know, thank you for validating that. And I'm like, that, sound, that sounded like she maybe actually did know the mother had a, a necklace with she her said, son's ashes in it. Does somebody have a necklace or thinking with ashes or thinking about doing it? That's what I wrote down or thinking yeah. about it. She goes, yeah. yeah, somebody's thinking about doing it. Right. But then, yeah. Okay. I was confused about why she would need, ha like Lauren had the need to say, I didn't know you, did I? You know, like, I didn't know anything about you and I got this one right or something. Oh, you I know, missed like, that part. She I said something that. about, that. thank you for validating that for me. And I wasn't able to, I didn't write down, I wasn't, couldn't write fast enough. Um, but the best friend came through. The best friends gave Suzanne a necklace that was purchased for her from her son, Michael. Yeah. And she says, that's amazing. And that's uh, evidence that he's saying, Michael, that the necklace was for you. I'm just validating that part because I guess possibly the best friend was lying when he said that he get, bought you this necklace for Mother's Day. So the so Michael so, told his best friend to buy his mother a, Michael's a mother for Mother's Day. A necklace for Mother's or, Day. Or he bought the necklace for Mother's Day and gave it to his friend and said, I'm going to die. So could you give this to my mom on Mother's Day? Right. Just in case. In case I die. In case I I'm die. Gonna you, I'm going to give you this necklace. But in case I die in the future, before Mother's Day, I want hmm. you to give it to my mom for Mother's Day and say right. it's for me. Right. I'm not sure that made any sense. That made less sense saying it out loud than what I wrote down. 11 11 11 11 Janice That's what was it. that I'm what almost on she, paper <laughs> what was she fishing for 11 11 11 I think it's in the rules the book of rules I think 11, 11. means something I know my grandmother used to think 11 was a special number so I don't know what I'm not sure why it's two sticks so they are special <laughs> I don't know why yeah I can't remember I can't remember what the reason was but it was her luck, one of her lucky numbers. Do you have one of his shoes? I have the feeling something's telling me that this woman, Suzanne, is is in a big grieving mess. And she is a mess. She needs to get some counseling because everybody's dead. She's moved next to her near her friend. It looks like everybody else is dead, and she's collected everything. And the first vi in the video with um the other medium, we find out that she has her, her dad was a handyman or worked in construction. She has all his tools. Uh -oh. She looks like she's just taking everything, everybody, as people die, she's just the repository. She's wearing her son's clothes. She has his shoes. Like how, how I've got one of my dad's shirts and I kept well, for I some reason, too. but how long how long was this reading after the the son's son death? died i don't like know his clothes still have a smell to him and that is not uncommon for people to smell the, the right the no uh, no Kat says 11 11 is a sign someone who passed is near you or some such thing oh okay <laughs> so, oh as if that's real <laughs> Oh. Uh, I think my grandmother had a different reason for liking 11. I don't know what it was, but I don't think it was that. But that's interesting to know. Oh. Like how people put significance to what you and I might think is a random thing. You know, 11 but is... She's still smelling the jacket, which, like I said, is I had a woman tell me, kid you not, 
She says, I know that the medium reading I had was real. I know it because there's no way they could have possibly have known. I hear that all the time. And what she finally tells me is that she went into the closet. Her children died, two children. They both died of um, like some, they had some sort of um, inherited disease. They weren't twins, mm -hmm. but they were very close in age. Yeah. And so um, she had gone into the closet and she had taken down the christening gown and she sat and she smelled it and she cried and fell onto the, onto the, onto the closet floor crying. And the only person who knows that story is her husband. And then of course she told me. So, I mean, the, she probably told more people about this. Of course. Yeah. And not really even thought about it. If you're yeah. in the grief fog, you don't know who you've talked to and what medium, you said to people. The medium knew that. She, and I think the medium said something like, did you just smell something that of your child? And she's, she interpreted it to mean that the, that the, the psychic had heard, had gotten the fact that she'd gone into the closet, pulled down the christening gown and was smelling it. When all the psychic said was, you still smell your child or you still have some clothing that you smell that smells like them, yeah. which is common. You yeah, see yeah. this over and over. Yeah. Nancy Grace, my God, Nancy Grace on Tyler Henry's show, she was saying that she keeps her, her father's handkerchief in a plastic thing so that she can smell it. She says oh. she carries it on her all, all the time. It's very common for people yeah, yeah. to smell something. Yeah, or, and wearing somebody's shirt, you know, it's like... A, Especially a bigger person that you can get comfortable in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 today she's getting readings, so maybe she wanted to wear her brother's, her son's shirt. Right, that's true. That's it's true. A special day. And she's got her, he's got the mother's quilt or whatever, the blanket. The yeah, what was that? First she started out with the blanket, something about his shoes, and then she says about a blanket. Yeah, something about a blanket you made, and then your mother's blanket. Oh, then it became a, then it became. She says, okay. "Oh, my Feather. mother made the blanket for my son." Well, yeah. why would you toss that? So she's like, you still have it. Like, and, yeah. and she's mentioning a blanket. And I'm thinking, I've got all, we don't throw away blankets until they're, you know, decrepit. And if somebody made a blanket for somebody else, I'm certainly not getting rid of it. Right, right. It'll have to be she said it, falling apart before I would do that. Maybe not. She even said it like she was sure of those things. You've got his shoes, you've got a blanket. You know, so I I think she knew bits and pieces about this one too. I don't think so. I think it was just something she said. What does the people in the chat say? Yeah, let us know. Listen, they're awful quiet right now. Randy showed up. He he says I'm late to the party, but I'm here. You'll have to go back and watch the video that'll be up on YouTube, or I guess you could go back and and Facebook and watch it there. It's there as well. But I love when, I love when she said to be a healthy skeptic about the <laughs> phone ringing, the oh my wrong God, numbers. Phone. Oh my gosh, my phone rings Janice and it says unknown on it. Oop, I just pulled my my camera. It says <laughs> unknown on it and there's nobody there. But at the end of that, didn't she convince her that maybe it was her son coming through? I don't think she totally she dissuaded asked, her from that. She says, ask, ask your son to give you oh, the oh, okay. That, oh, okay. Like, so, so whenever- Ask for a sign? Well, to be more clear. So I guess if it's unknown, she should say, it says unknown, but if it's my son, please give me three beeps when I listen or something. Is oh, she okay. actually going to pick it up? Or if it's unknown from from um, Brunswick, Maine, then then that must be from... I mean, I get, I get those all the time. Like spam calls all the time. Yeah, they say some like, Yeah, whatever they've they've you know like cycled through whatever city they're they're doing they're using so if i if i set the intention that if i get a if i get an unknown call from a certain area arizona or whatever or you know then and that happens three times then that is that confirmation like how many times does that have to happen for me to actually know it's just not one of the a ladybug appears on the screen <laughs> you know it's real well that'd be amazing oh, so okay. nothing about a red ruby ring does anybody no. know anything about a red ruby ring yeah anybody, anybody? <laughs> hey anybody in chat or on youtube do you know anything about a red with ring? charlotte 
Charlotte, Charlotte. Well, and I didn't write that down. Right? That's right. I was, there was too much that was coming through. Jason, she mentioned, oh, James or Jim. Yeah. She and they says, said, no, Jason. my brother-in-law's middle name is James. James. Right. Wow. That's, that's a sign that you've got a motivated sitter there that is willing to just, well, I will, I will go to through my contact list on my phone and, and see, let me look through the address book and see. Um, <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, I was thinking like, she seemed a little bit more sure about this one, but maybe like her pattern is that she doesn't accept no for an answer. So, cause she'll say, you know, I'm just throwing it out there or whatever. So, so I could be, I could be missing that part. I think, I think you're right. I think she probably just, you know, sometimes states something and hopes it sticks. And then sometimes she phrases it in a, in a um, question and either way is fine with her because she's, she's like her brain. I couldn't do it because I have to process things. I'm a little bit slower, but she seems to have like a really quick mind that, so she's she whatever the answer is she's able to i mean obviously she's not that great as a as a medium but um but i think that she's quick enough to whatever the person says she's just going to be able to go with it so awesome. yeah i mean that that makes me yeah, think about it. that's why it. that's so what's awesome. so cool about like looking at these psychics <laughs> um one after another because, yeah, because you see the pattern it, you can see the pattern and you can see that there's slightly different, like the, there's the different approaches. And I mean, they're all bad so far, the ones that I've watched, but um, in terms of being evidence-based. Oh, I'm, I'm waiting for that. And evidence. sometimes even being convincing, they're not that great, but well, it is interesting to like watch their language patterns and watch how they respond to certain situations and and see what the similarities are and the differences are because I think I think there I think some of it can be kind of subtle and interesting. Well, here's some other things I wrote down. Uh, did he die close to a birthday? And then she says his birthday, and I I I love that one because it sounds like it's it sounds like it's specific. But okay, let's say your birthday is January 1st, right? Let's just say it's January 1st. Close to is a relative term. So yeah. what would be close to January 1st? Would December 15th be the cutoff to close? And would January 15th be like close? And so if, if I said, was his birthday January 1st? Would you say, oh, that's close. That was, His birthday was actually the first. So yeah. in your mind, what is close? And so if it's 15 days one way and 15 days on the other way, that's 30 days. So that's a whole month. So your odds are one in 12. Right. To be close right. to a birthday. And, right. Um, I, I just love that. I think that's, I think it's a clever uh, uh, thing mediums use because they, use, they match it with like go 20 days. Uh, 20 days. Of 25 days yeah they match it with special occasion birthday anniversary so like it's so you, you, generally it's not just birthday by itself too so the odds of hitting a some sort of significant special occasion holiday birthday is pretty great with it if you're thinking about a a 30-day period then, right, then exactly. you're generally going to hit something right she asked about a voicemail and she's got the voicemail and I'm thinking to myself, absolutely. Who's going to delete the uh, voicemail of your, of your dead son saying, Hey mom, just want to let you know, I got, I got to the place safely and I'll, I'll give you a call later tonight. Who would delete that? Right. Okay. Right. Um, and then she mentioned Jason, the, the sitter, Suzanne, whenever Jim or James come up, could you mean Jason? And then the, and she waited a tick. Lauren waited like a little bit. And then she says, um, Jason, is that a family friend? And she's like, yeah, um, kind of like as if she's bringing it back in as if she didn't know, um, like she brought it up on her own. And that's, and then she says, do you still have a home line? You know, no, there's a landline. Yeah. The answer was no. Um, I don't know why she brought that in. But I think she was going to do the, the um do you pick up the phone and there's nobody there line because that's common no. it's playing with your electronics i picked up a phone one time when um i was living in the same town my one of my twin brother was and and uh 
I picked up the phone and he was with before it rang and he was on the other end. I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> well, you know, another thing that I thought was really odd. Now picture this. Um, she's moved. She's moved. Yeah. Um, um, she's moved. Okay. So I'm visioning this woman packing up all her dad's belongings because all his tools and stuff like that, probably her mom's belongings, all the blankets, her yeah. son's clothes, everything, and moved to be near this other lady, which is a pain, because usually when you move, you you start getting rid of some stuff, you know. Dad's right. tools, those, those mean a lot to me, but I'm going to start giving them to somebody else, right. but, you know, or selling them or something. But this woman got one of those old-fashioned phones, you know, that you dial or you push numbers on, and she put it next to her bed and it's not even connected to anything. Now, what the heck? I could see maybe possibly having a phone by your bed, you get rid of the landline and it's still sitting there because it just is there. Right. And, and that's just there because you're too lazy to move the damn phone. Right. Why you've would a... you move to a new place and say, I'm going to move to this new location, pack up all the stuff we have. And here's the phone that we used to have growing up. I'm going to put it next to my, the limited space on my mm -hmm. table next to my bed, even though it's not connected. I'm going to put it there. What, what, she's waiting for it to ring or something? Why would well, you put it there? I think this brings us back to like at the beginning, we were talking about like psychologically, are these people, these mediums helping people move on and, and learn how to, um, I don't, I don't know if, if you've lost a son or a, a close relative or whoever it is, friend, it, it, you don't, you don't ever forget that person and the pain may or may not go away completely, but you do learn how to manage it. You should and you learn do, how to manage you, it. That's you how you do get it. move on, you know, and, 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 I was talking with my partner about this the other day. Um, I don't think my dad would want me to be in, in, you know, the early days of grief. Mm -hmm. I don't think he would want me to stay in that spot. I think he would want me to move on and be happy when I'm happy and sad when I'm sad, or whatever, you know, I, I don't think he would want me to stay in that spot. And, and so I wonder about these psychics who, who um, sort of, we, somebody said it earlier, like enable that situation where you, you're not moving on for your grief. You know, it's sort of like you don't need to keep the phone and all the tools and a blanket and, and shoes and all the clothing. You know, you, you pick one of each of those things that mean something mm -hmm. and keep those and then move on from the rest. Or I mean, take photos of them. I'm, or take photos or, or make a, I made, um, I made pillows Art. out of some of my dad's clothes for my brothers and stuff, you know, it's sort of like, um, as a token, you know, so you don't need, you don't, the memories are what, to me anyway, I mean, I'm saying just for myself, the memories are, are what matters and that pillow brings back a whole host of, mm -hmm. I don't need 47 things. And plus I live in a really small house. I don't need 47 things that remind me of my dad. I've got one or two things and the rest, you know, whatever. So, um, and I, that's just the way I've done things. People grieve. You were saying it the other day, people grieve in different ways all the time, you know, and I'm not saying there's one right or wrong way, but I do wonder when I listen to these psychics, some of these people and it comes out with the people that are um that their pain is so fresh but then when you get talking to it, or they get talking um and sharing information it's like that wasn't the fresh that person didn't pass away newly you know it's like Six years or something yeah um these are long i worry about that part i that doesn't that to me does not seem healthy and and that's just me, but you know, I I would worry about somebody that had to, like in the scenario we were talking about, to bring every little thing that their loved one had with them wherever they go. 
um i don't know i'd be interested to to hear well, what other people think i have but... a video up on my channel that i did with somebody named sam and she um is a grief counselor she works in the business um they do grief they do this and she still believes in mediumship but she doesn't believe in thomas john she knows he's not right but she still believes there's that there is medium that there is somebody out there who can communicate so fascinating woman to to listen to her story but anyway it's on my channel yeah. it's um i think it's this talking to a grief counselor or whatever but her and i kind of agree on this that at some point you're supposed to have moved to a healthier place with your grief it's yeah it's, i mean everybody grieves differently in a different time but if you're if if the grief i don't know put a number on it six months a year some kind of some something in there if yeah. you are at a point where you are just in it so badly that you are not getting to a place where you can remember them with happiness and fondness or yeah um i mean i've got pictures of my my parents right here's a picture of my mom she's right here's a picture of her i keep her right here where i can see it i have a picture of my dad right there i mean there's another picture of my mom i i want to be able to look up and see them i don't want to look at that picture and start bawling my head off and, and right that the right. grief is that painful still we, we've right. got to move to some sort of new normal because we've got people who die around us all the time and if you yeah. take all this grief from all these people then i don't know how the human beings you'd like, just be like, crushed it would, yeah, I, it would be just a crushing thing all the yeah. time now it's different when it's a child i i suspect that would be tough no but again people have children die and so they manage to move on somehow even though it's difficult yeah but like tracy thomas john's assistant she's getting regular connections with her son from thomas john he's sending her text messages from his phone of with like emo emojis on it and saying your son just told me to send you this and she's like oh my gosh I, my son just sent me messages it is it is juvenile level just cruel cruel i mean this woman it's been years since her son's died but she cannot i mean this is her whole life her yeah. son's death yeah she's made her whole everything about herself is yep. focused on that son she's got other living children but no everything is a focus on this death of her son that she loved well yeah of course it's horrible would he want you to be devoting your entire life to it and would he want you to be looking at a screenshot that somebody else sent you with a bunch of emojis on it that came from him? Hmm. Would he want that for his mother? Yeah. Like why can you take advantage yeah, of it yeah. that way? I don't know. I took a death and dying class when I was in college and maybe that has shaped kind of the way. And I don't, I'm not a parent. I don't know what I would do um, in that situation, but it seems like I don't I don't know I don't know when you I know, culture is different too some cultures right, are very, right 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 like um reticent about it they're like okay well mom mom's gone now I miss her a hell of a lot but I'm going to see her later we're going to go right. and we're going to be together yeah yeah but to be regularly sending you signs oh my god um and the thing about the phone that really bugged me, um, Kat did said, well, maybe the phone is really pretty or unique. And that's why she has it sitting next to the bed. That's that's possible. I mean, I love those old phones that kind of you dial them and they go. Tick, 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 tick. So do you think she you just know. like reaches over and dials her phone? <laughs> so she maybe she has that. a retro house. You know, maybe she has a, a retro house or something. I don't know. We're making a lot of assumptions about this person that we don't yeah, know. We don't know. But the thing about it is, is if you've got, so what cat is, not cat. I'm sorry, cat. I'm not talking about you, cat. Your name is on my mind. So what Lauren, I think cat should just start doing readings anyway. She's doing a really good job in the, in the chat. So what I think is going on with Lauren that was very harmful, not only is she still enabling all these people, but what I think that telling her that last little bit about when they call and it's unknown she's like well 
be be a little skeptical. We all get those calls. But then she's like, it might be your son. So pick up. So I don't think it's a good idea to suggest for somebody as credulous, you know, who believes in these things with with no skepticism at all, even though she says she loves the truth, to be answering the freaking phone. So what if it's one of those scam artists that calls and says, you know, I'm I'm your I'm your, you know, like a relative or it could be just or, I want to sell you, know. you a, a a funeral plot or it could be anything. So now she's going to think that's a message that came from her son. Yeah. Why are you suggesting this woman continue picking up the phone, even if it says unknown? Why would you? You would be like, no, those are scam calls. Do not pick them up. That's good advice. Yeah. That I would give anybody around me. I would never pick it up. Do not pick up the phone. Do not answer the phone. If you do not know who it is who's calling, but yet now she's just got this woman. Yeah, I th um, I think I think Lauren's naive in terms of her willingness to to um, dole out advice in areas that she doesn't really have any business. Like she's not a grief count. There was nothing on her yeah, website a, that she was a counselor a or a grief counselor and or you know that was it she had listed i'm a wife i'm a mother i'm a medium yeah yeah There's nothing, nothing on there and a clinical psychologist that specializes in in traumatic uh grief or any kind of grief yeah i mean i i think she's yeah i think she's setting herself up for somebody should sue these people but i guess you have to wait for the harm okay so i asked in the chat and i've been waiting for people to answer what they thought of this last reading and what before i read to you what they said because i know you're not looking at this what, what do you think of this last reading that i mean as far as hot cold reading or oh i i i felt like there were um she, she was either really good at reading the person's um environment um i thought there may have been some bits and pieces that she may have known but I mean, you've convinced me on some of the other ones of things that I thought maybe a little bit hot um, that she probably was just cold reading. But I, I, there was just one one part where she she sort of made it a point of saying, "I didn't know anything about you," and thank you for validating that. And that made me that actually made me think maybe she knew a little bit about this person. So I guess that's it's it's um this was a this medium was confusing in her readings and i'm probably just confused about her and you did listen to it and then we just re-listened to it so it does get a little scrambled in our heads too because we just listened to it twice now yeah and now we're discussing it so it's it's like wait which one was what which, which, <laughs> which person was which one was the one that i thought i thought it could be that she knew a little bit about this person and then she got a bunch of uh, and um, she's got a motivated sitter as well. So um, between those two things, I think that. Um, oh, and don't yeah. forget there's a white feather. Look out for the white right. feather. Right, right. And she missed a bunch. I mean, but Lauren doesn't take no for an answer. She's just like, you know, <laughs> if <laughs> if something's wrong, she's like, maybe in the group, there's a red ring and Somebody Charlie. Somebody has a ring. I just know it. It's red. Yeah. Like, like ruby, I or it's just red. She's persistent. Well, I'm interested to hear what other people thought okay. about this. One. Um, I'm people with way more experience. Three, I'm looking at the three again, just glancing at it so I can remember which was which. Um, first one was first one was uh, Joni was Joni? second, I think. Um, was first? I maybe I don't see where I have my notes. Hang on a minute. Second. I gotta go. Down was third. And the first one was who? Somebody remind me. I've forgotten already. Tracy. Um, sorry. I don't know if I first wrote down. Was. I don't know if I wrote down her name. What would remind me something that happened during it? Tracy. No, it was Tracy. Because oh, she Tracy. she said not not the Tracy that knows Thomas John, but the other Tracy. I'm that right. walked away and then came back with the dogs with the dogs yes everybody in the family has dogs okay right okay that's why okay and then Joni and Joni was, was the one yeah. that had messed up family the family was 
in serious problems. The yes. woman's never left Minnesota. Yes. And then Suzanne, who I know I've seen read before. So you guys go check out the uh, other videos. This is going to be in a playlist for the Mediumship Summit. So all of the um, all of the readings are going to be in that playlist. So if you want to see the whole playlist of all the different readings, and some of them, like the one I just did with Janice uh, a week ago with um, the other medium, Kelly, that's in the playlist. But some of the other even short ones are in this playlist. So if you want to see them all. Um, okay, so here's what the people said. I gave them a second okay. to, to give you some more. Because there's people who've been here the whole time with us. Oh, thank you for doing that. And I always I learn agree. from these comments too. So thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, I really agree. You guys are amazing. It's fun. Daniel said she floods people with all kinds of spaghetti in hopes that a piece or two sticks to their emotional <laughs> ceiling. That was good. Oh, yeah. That should be a t-shirt. Yeah, I like that. Kat said motorcycle to driving badly to being in a car. Huh? Uh, Daniel said it's pathetic. Um, okay, so let me see. The sitter just handed her the hit. Okay, so Dan David said the sitter just handed her the hit. She's trying to get away from the necklaces. Um, Kenny says, healthy skeptic. What? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I laughed at that said, one. Be a healthy skeptic, the best device ever. Mm. Says, I get unknown callers every day. And um, Daniel said, got to jump off the call. It's been very interesting. Thank you for doing this kind of thing. Yeah, thank you, Janice. This is really, a, this is a real pull for somebody to sit here this long with me and talk, but <laughs> I can't get through this. And I, I did a video, I analyzed one hour of uh, video for, uh, for um, Lillian Schwartz and it, it, I got it done faster, but I had to chop it up so much. I'm chopping, chopping, moving around. I thought it wasn't probably flowing well. I thought that sitters, people watching, the viewers that are watching this on YouTube later, they're not going to really get a good essence of what this woman says and what the feel for the mediumship is. I mean, nobody has to sit here and watch the whole thing through. I mean, you could take your time doing it. Um, okay, let's see. Pat says that this reading of the three is the best. She says it was the best reading of Lauren's using the term lightly best. <laughs> right. And right. then she says, I think she had some intel on it. And it's not just a cold reading, in my opinion. David says, I think it was a cold reading. She got lots of help from the sitter. And I think he, also, he also mentioned he has a black and white cat as well as I do. Hmm. So, you know, um, and I thought Kenny's, oh, Kenny says, Kenny Biddle, this is the investigator from Center for Inquiry, so he should know. I think she may have some notes from previous reading of the same person, so perhaps remembering details, then the, a big dose of cold reading. And I don't agree. I don't think so. And the sitting, I don't think so at all, because the, and you guys don't know this because you haven't watched those other videos, but the other videos, there was a lot of details that were pulled out, including Elvis and her dad's occupations and stuff that if she'd watched those previous that previous video she would have um pulled some of it into this and hmm. she, didn't. she would have mentioned elvis she would have mentioned i mean she mentioned dancing but she didn't mention elvis and uh she asked her about like re records and stuff the, the other sitter the other medium and none of that came through so i don't think she saw the other one in my opinion, well, the thing is, in there. she started that chat early. She was there early. She mentions it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if there could you know, like, chat. I'm wondering if she picked up a few th tidbits in the chat. It's possible, except she never in and, and nobody mentioned her son's name until um, the sitter herself says Michael. And uh, she said that I um yeah, we don't know that because like you said earlier, she could have she could have said Fred or something to another sitter and you know like who is it who knows a Fred or who knows somebody who has a red ring and somebody could say my my sister Louise had a red ring and they've written that in chat. We can't see that, so we don't mm. know mm. that it's there and then she could have if she had another 10 minutes she could have done the reading for somebody named louise and 
us out here would know anything about how she got the word Louise. I but think her energy, yeah. I think her energy for the third one was a little bit up. And it, that's her why energy. her energy. Um, <laughs> I know. Her, what did she call it? Her vibrancy or whatever? What, uh, raise your vibration. I think she raised her vibration um, in the last one. And that made me think she maybe knew a little bit more about the sitter than not. I mean, not a ton. But I just felt like I'm sort of leaning towards that she had picked up a few things um, incidentally. And then, I mean, not purposefully like Thomas John does, but I think I think that she may have picked up a few things while they were waiting and she was looking in the chat. Well, the other thing is she was very specific about the people. She didn't play that game of, oh, you know, like, the call on? yeah, it could be through. seven people in the, you know, and then they rule them out over time. It might only have been seven people on the screen. We don't know. <laughs> but she, she, she knew she didn't want, she knew which Tracy she wanted. She didn't want, she didn't want Tracy Thomas John's Tracy. She well, wanted the other one. She's looking right at the person. She said, I have to pin you. So that she says that during the thing, she says, I'm going to have to pin you. So it's just you, because yeah. that means she was looking at the gallery view the whole time. There's all yeah. those faces on there. 30 yeah. people can fit on a screen. Yeah. And so, so, and it was only, I know there was 34 at the beginning of the summit because the first media mentioned it. We don't know if at the point that she's giving her reading right now, if 34 people are still there or if it's 10 or it's 50, we don't know. She just said, there's a lot of people here and I'm not used to it. Right. So it's, it, she might've gone right to Tracy because Tracy might've been saying, I've not had a reading today. Nobody's come through for me. And I feel bad that my family doesn't want to come through. And maybe that's why she wanted to go to that Tracy person. Cause she, possibly again, yeah. we don't know what's going on in the chat. So my personal opinion is Lauren is cold reading. She's not good at it. This is awful. All the things that felt like a hit were only vaguely like a hit and they weren't that specific. And she missed so much. It's like, again, if you had, if you have one-on-one -on -one contact with a person from the, that's dead, that's talking about hummingbirds and people going to jail and, and initials of words and, and I mean, you could have come up with something specific. You could have said our our drivers, our license plate on our car when we were growing up was this. Our we went to such and such elementary school, and my first teacher's name was so and so. If right. there is evidence, it still could be found out. But I mean, it's not perfect. But there is evidence she could give in that reading that would have been evidence. And this stuff here, yeah, is none of this was I'm evidence. Seeing a white feather, and there's a James or a Jim here. And then did he pass close to his birthday, a ring? What's this about a necklace that somebody had that was thinking about getting a necklace with some of the ashes in it? Uh, how did the son die? We still don't know. We don't right. know anything. Was it an accident? Was it on purpose? Was it, was it, was it mental illness? Was it substance abuse? Was it, right. we, don't, we don't have anything. What's this about San Francisco on a bridge and, I mean, dogs coming out of the woodwork and a cat. <laughs> well, right? Bark after that? they bark. It was awful. Kathy yep. just up here and she's like, hi. And I'm like, Kathy, we're, we're almost done. <laughs> you have to watch I wanna, I'm curious I what you say, Kathy. I want to see the evidence that they are. That's one of the things she promised these people with, is that the, they would have evidence that their person was there. And right. I'm afraid. Well, in the sitter's mind, I guarantee everybody oh. who sat there and was here is saying yeah. there's no way that she knew all that information unless she was a psychic. Of course, it was excellent. Of yeah. course, that Janice and Susan, they're just a bunch of skeptics. I hear they're even atheists. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we were not presuming time. competence, that's for sure. We were not, we're, we were doubting. And she said at the beginning, you have you to believe, you have to, and it, it, you know, you have to look for the signs and you have to keep looking and, until they show up. And we just weren't willing to do that. So it's probably our, yeah, I mean, she blames her sitter too for, for doubting, you know, if you doubt too much. 
it is our fault. We're being very skeptical. We're not letting yeah. them get away with this. We're not saying, well, it was close to whatever day. I mean, it's the month next to February. And I mean, even her. No. Yeah. I mean, even her own proof with the ladybugs, it, it, maybe it was significant. Maybe she put significance on it, but it, it wasn't unusual, especially if you are talk who was, was it um daniel said they're they're daniel said they they, they twice mouse, a year twice yeah. a year in, in west virginia and it didn't consistently happen so she she you know she broke her own rule david says healthy skepticism nudge nudge wink wink i love that yeah. You've got you've got lights in the background, by the way. I don't know if it's somebody trying to come through or <laughs> <laughs> the orbs. No, what it is is I'm in California, so I'm three hours before you. But what it is right out this window is I have a cherry tree and I have an apricot tree and I have a plum tree. And on the trees, they're 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 starting to bear fruit and they're starting to turn. Actually, the cherries I can just go out there and eat them. And that's I nice. never bring them in the house. They don't make it to the house. So I've got these big long strips of uh, mylar. And I'm putting uh, them on the tree so that the birds will be spooked and they won't eat the fruit. So it, that is the random lights that you see behind me. Nice. And I also hang these like mirror balls off the window. I, I like the lights. It's my it's my family coming through to give me a message. But that's right. it yeah, if anybody's curious, it's just the lights. We should, yeah, we should talk about the orbs too, because the orbs, you know, in photographs, there's Kenny Biddle has some information on his website about back. He's like, no. Yeah. Well, one of the other people on chat said that the orbs are her family telling her to dust. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Or that she, doesn't want, she doesn't have a clean house and, or she has too clean of a house or something like that. I don't know. So I'm going to upload this. Thankfully, I have to edit almost nothing. Thank you so much for making it so I don't have to edit hardly anything. Yeah. Else. Because this takes forever to load as many hours as we've done this. I really appreciate it, Janice. This is so much more fun to do it this way than to. Adrian says she's going to do one with me, but she's not been feeling really well. But I'm. I have more, so I'm going to call on you again and and see if you're willing to spend the day with me here. I am so much fun. I I do. I'm serious. I I like this stuff. stuff. I'm like I'm learning a ton, and well, and uh, <laughs> you see stuff um, I don't see, and I like doing it on Facebook because they said lots of things also that I didn't catch, and I yep. knew that if I didn't quite remember it, somebody on there was going to catch it. I thought that was fun too. That was yeah. a good addition. It's good to have them there. And so people, if you're watching this on YouTube later, please, if you're watching this on YouTube later, please not only subscribe, but leave comments in there. I promise I will respond to your comments. Um, and if you're watching this on Facebook live, go over and leave the comments on the video. Go watch the video on YouTube because I really could use the views over there and uh, especially subscribe. So don't watch it on Facebook live watch it on youtube so that that would be helpful to my channel that i'm trying to grow and um boy is that frustrating to to do i get i get people one guy just wrote to me left a comment i just had a reading with thomas john two weeks ago and he's real and i'm like yeah what do you mean real i know he's real too <laughs> i get i get <laughs> lots of comments <laughs> yeah i get comments about my videos i'm putting up about on fc oh yeah tell everybody what your your channel is i love your i love your youtube channel i've got a channel called fc is not science and what i try to do is take um youtube videos of people using facilitated communication and it's it's got 17 different names so rapid prompting method spelling to communicate supported typing whatever and try to critique the videos in terms of is the is the client looking? Are they touching the letters that the facilitator is calling out? I've got one coming up about um, one of the things that, especially with spelling to communicate and rapid prompting method is they put their students in a corner, like trap them in a corner. So I did a I did a video that's coming out. Oh, good. I can't remember when, yeah, soon. I'm still editing it, but um, I try to put them out. I, they. They take me a while, so I'm trying to get into a schedule where I I post every Friday. Um, so I know there's a, there's a, at least the next two or three Fridays there's something to look at. That that so. drives me nuts when they put them in the corner. 
that really bugs me. That's bothered me for a very long time. So what Janice is doing with her channel is what I'm doing with my channel. We're breaking down existing videos of that they oftentimes they release these videos as right. it's good. Like it's right. It's not like us going undercover and doing a sting operation on them. These are videos that they have put up on their channels, various places, as news articles. Real. It's good stuff. This is good evidence. And so what Janice is doing, but she's much more professional. She's like doing the science. She's got she's got citations. Hers is very, 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 very professional. And <laughs> I have learned a ton. And some of the things she's done, I've incorporated in here in a lot of ways it's subtle you won't really notice it but I no, i'm learning that's it. why well that's why this is interesting to me because uh we've talked about how they they overlap Similarities, you know the, yeah, the self-delusion the um uh presuming competence the, the remember the hits and forget the misses and all, all that are, there's overlap They're totally overlooking the stupidest you know things like somebody could just say oh there a bird flew by that's evidence. And they're like, yes, it is evidence. I mean, it's just like that blatant. Whereas an FC, the person's not even looking at here's here's the keyboard. And they're like looking over here and their hands over here. And they're like, see, look at them type. And you're like, they're yeah. not typing. Their hand, their wrist is not touching anything. Their hand is in the air. How are they typing in the air? <laughs> anyway, you got to check out our channel. FC is not real. It's <laughs> Hopefully, really my um, my newer videos are a little it. bit. I'm new to new to We're doing all the videos so edit. hopefully they're improving as i go along i think i think they're fine i think they're great think <laughs> you showed me some tools in there i didn't even know existed on that program we were using the same program and so um i was i had not known about some of those things and i'm like oh check that out i didn't know that was in here so i was I, know, I like the little arrows and and one thing with facilitated communication, yeah, with facilitated communication, sometimes it happens so fast that you can't really tell. And I've been able to slow down. Um, one of the ones that's coming out soon is the person was using a, a translucent letter board. So you could tell where he was pressing oh. and where what the words the facilitator was saying. And there's no way they match. The last one and you were like, you can see them typing like these four letters and nowhere in the script that they said, he said, has those four letters. So where did yeah. that come from? That was great. But yeah. Yeah, use those templates. And, you, you know, if the person's holding a letter board, they gosh, you guys, they say they're holding it in the air like this. And, 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 and you can see their finger and the, the letter board's moving around like this, but you sometimes you can't write tell. And so whenever Janice puts a, a firm like a template on there you can see that how much the letter board's moving but you just don't really notice it so much whenever you're um watching oh anyway. well because you're watching the student you're watching the client and that and what i'm trying to do is have people focus on the facilitator because that's where the, the client's fine you know like the client's doing what the client does and uh, but the facilitator is the one that should know better. And and um, a lot of the the pro FC videos and movies that are coming. Spellers is one that just came out there. They don't want you to watch the facilitator. They want you to watch. They think that's right. And listen to the music and listen to what supposedly they're saying. There's all kinds of distractions. Mm -hmm. It's a magic trick. Um, it is a magic trick. Yeah. And and so my focus with my channel is to try to focus on the facilitator. Um, so we're getting some people giving us thumbs up, I guess. Like, oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, and so and FC is not science. FC is not science. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say it relates back to to this as well to the mediumship is that they don't want you to focus on the medium. And right. if you're watching a show or or. Uh, something live you're all everybody in the audience is looking at the medium but the medium is seeing people in the audience that are nodding or going like oh, or you know and nobody's looking at that person so when the medium goes i think it's this from this area or i think it's you right there you're the person i need to get to nobody has been looking at that person so whenever all heads turn away from the medium to look at the person who's being called on, now we say she's already probably calmed down a little bit. 
and she's there and and so again the same thing don't look at the person don't look at the audience look at the medium Mm -hmm. they're distracting you from the fact that somebody in the audience has just made an expression or or something and and that's it's the same kind of thing it look don't look at the right place and just like right here we can see um only what's presented to us in the video but yet there's all sorts of things going on behind the scenes on these videos that we can't see the chat and the gallery yeah so yeah. all right you guys i'm going to get this video up onto youtube and psychics explained i am willing everybody to subscribe to my video and leave comments on youtube and hit the subscribe button that goes ding I'm using my magic energy to have you do that. Okay, so now that I've done that, so anybody watching this on YouTube who's gotten this far into the video, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. <laughs> Thanks, Janice. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye.